Perhaps he knows, you know. I know. At Scott's Richmond practice, an extra special little patient is arriving in style. Gird your loins, Gish. Yeah. We're going in. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, how are you? All right. We're, okay. we're here to see Dr. Scott. Oh, lovely. Oh, who's this? Six-year-old Dachshund Gigi is a familiar face, appearing alongside her doting owners Steph and Dom on Gogglebox. Well, hello, lovely people. Oh, there you are. Steph and Dom are longtime friends of Scott. Welcome to the area. And have recently moved to southwest London. Hello, Gigi. How's my girlfriend? She's not good doing so great. She's not great I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Either she's pining for you. Well, obviously, yes. Or there's something wrong. Or there's something wrong. I think there's something oh, wrong. Oh, dear. We're very concerned that Gigi is unwell. She's lost a lot of weight. Uh, she's just off her game. She seems very lethargic. Come on, then. Let's go, team. Come on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're pretty sure something's afoot, because uh, she is not herself. Tell me what's been happening. About a month ago, we were down in the New six Forest weeks. six weeks ago, yeah. and she got caught in a rat trap. Ooh. A, you know, proper old, old fashioned <laughs> mouse trap with teeth. She's only just a bit bigger than a rat herself. Yeah. We took her to a vet's in the New Forest. We did the bloods, um, but they found nothing. Okay. Do you know what it was that was on the trap? Chocolate. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Which, as you know, can also be poisonous. So it was good that they checked her over. So that was given yeah. the all clear. So yeah. what's causing you concern right well, now? She's um, she's just lost a lot of weight, even though she's eating. She's lacking in uh, sustained energy. Mm. So she will play, but then only for a little bit and then be knackered. Okay. Well, I think we're just going to take uh, Mrs. Temperature, all right, which you won't be impressed by. Just uh, hold there. That's the old so much up the bum trick, is it? I'm sorry, it is, yes. Why don't you give your little girl a kiss and uh, see if she'll be happier? Uh, I don't associate this with me, okay? <laughs> this is Dr. Scotty shoving things up. Animals bums. She's the only other woman I will let Dom kiss. <laughs> just so you know. Sorry, Scrooge. Right. Here we go. Think now, just look away. Think of England. Lie Scrooge. back. Look away. Think of <laughs> grass fields. Oh. Gambling along. Here we go. Temperature's just fine. Good, Good girl. Good. Sorry Good. about that, honey. Took him one box. All right. Little Gigi has definitely lost her sparkle. This is normally a really sprightly, happy, energetic dog. She looks dull, she looks flat, she looks weak. First of all, I want to look at her liver health because I know that she has consumed potentially something quite toxic and that would damage the liver. So I think what we need to do is to pop her downstairs, we'll take some bloods and we'll just work out where things are going wrong. Do you have any medicinal brandy? <laughs> for you or for the dog? For me. <laughs> Out the back, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you can't touch it, young lady. Mm. All right, we'll see you in a minute. All right. Okay. All right, I promise you I'll be back soon. Mm. I suspect Gigi knows she's not well. Mm. I can see it in her eyes. <laughs> you know, the, the bloods will hopefully tell us what's wrong. And hopefully, whatever, whatever we find out it is, that it's treatable. Yeah. Just around the corner... Betty, you'll get it. Good girl, lovely. Good girl. Another one of Scott's regular clients, Claire, is getting ready for a trip to the practice. Good girl. I have a Celium Terrier called Betty. I have a German Shorthaired Pointer called Lola. And then two Maine Coons, Chip and his sister Chili. <laughs> the dogs get on with each other and the cats get on with each other, but they don't get on with each other. If you see what I mean. <laughs> right, you two. You've got to stay there. You know you're not allowed upstairs. Could you go and see the kiddies? But today, it's not the dogs, but one of Claire's upstairs feline residents who needs to see Scott. Boy. So they're 12 years old. I've had them since they were kittens, so they've been a part of my life for a very long time. Chili is bulletproof. She goes to the vet once a year for a check and there's never anything wrong with her. <laughs> Here we go. Should we give you your inhaler? But unlike Chili... Good boy. Chip is starting to feel his age. Don't hold your breath. Good boy. He's got asthma. He has a blocked tear duct in one of his eyes, so one of his eyes cries permanently. Right, stick your feet in. So Claire makes sure Chip has regular checkups. I get my feet in. There we are. Here and we this go. afternoon, he's booked in to see Scott. Right, let's go.
This is my girlfriend, Gigi, don't tell Zoe. <laughs> but um, she's not very well. Hey, baby. Hmm? She doesn't look very well, does she? No. It's a little bit sad. At the Richmond practice, Scott and Nurse Nathan are running tests on celebrity dog Gigi's liver function. Oh, scratch, sweetie. Oh, brave girl. To try to find out the cause of her weight loss and lethargy. When we suspect that a patient has liver disease, we do a blood test. And the blood test will show us if the enzymes associated with liver function are raised. And if they are, it would show that the liver's under stress. Stay there. Good girl. Stay there. Good girl. OK. X-ray. Scott is also performing an X-ray to look for any physical abnormalities in Gigi's liver. So what we've got here is the shadow of the liver, and it's just quite big. It's quite swollen, it's taking up quite a lot of Gigi's abdomen, so it would suggest that the liver is just plain angry. I can't see any obvious large lumps or bumps in the abdomen, so that's good news. Blood's already, Scott. Thanks, mate. Oh, no. Look at that. It's off the scale. No, they're going to be mortified. Oh, dear Gigi, eh? If only you could read. Upstairs, Gigi's owners, Steph and Dom, have been waiting anxiously for the results. Should be fine. Should be fine. Hi, guys. No, oh, there you are. your girl. Oh, baby. Unfortunately, the news is a bit concerning actually. Um, yeah, her liver's not functioning very well at the moment. Um, her liver enzymes are all raised. One of them is so high it's actually off the charts. You're joking me. The liver is a really robust organ and it's actually one of the only ones that's able to regenerate itself. Most of the time, the liver can actually lose about 70% of its function before any clinical signs will be present. So the fact that Gigi's already sick shows how badly damaged her liver really is. There's a lot of different possibilities when it comes to liver disease, uh, and they can vary in scale from something that might come and go to something that's here to stay and also potentially life-threatening. Oh, God, you're making me feel sick. So where do we go from here? She's a dog that needs hospital treatment. What we're left with is a liver that's just plain angry. And to determine exactly what's going on with it and how we can best treat Gigi, we need to do a liver biopsy. And that means an anaesthetic and surgery. We need to find out what's going on. Oh, God. I was not expecting you to say that. It never really occurred to me all this time that there might actually be a serious issue. It literally has never crossed my mind. It's absolutely floored me. Right, well, we better hand her over them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right, so... Well, beauty, you're going to be fine, all right? Oh, baby. Take a bunch of mummy. Uh, I'm really... I'm, just, I'm so frightened now that there might be... You might find something absolutely hideous and we can't mm. do anything about it. I think that'd be a day of national warning. Scott and Nurse Nathan are about to begin surgery on Gigi. Get you through this. To find out what's causing her liver disease. All right, thanks, I'm cutting now. The liver is a complicated organ and it does a lot of different things. And in this instance, it's clearly unhappy about something, whether it's because the dog has eaten something that it shouldn't, whether it's been exposed to something infectious, whether it is harboring cancer. All those things are possibilities. I'm just going into abdomen now, Nathan. Let's hope we don't find anything too worrying. So first of all, I'm just looking around at all the organs that I can see. So small intestine, stomach, and it all looks fine. The liver, it's just very angry looking. It's very swollen. Not normal. A sample of Gigi's liver will be sent to the lab for testing. OK, Nathan, I'm just closing up now. How's she getting on? Yeah, she's doing well so far. Yeah, good. Very happy when this is over and she's woken up. This whole procedure, I think I've had my stomach in my mouth. I've been very, very nervous because Steph and Dom are good friends and I know how much they love this dog. 
We all want to know what's going wrong with you so I can make you better. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And now's the start of the agonising wait. We have to send off the piece of liver, the biopsy sample, off to the lab. The pathologist will then have a look and then tell me exactly what's going on with Gigi's liver. It could be something serious, and let's hope it's not. Gigi will spend the night recovering at the clinic before going home with our own Steph and Dom tomorrow. sorted out today. I'm probably not going to like it, but it's for your own good. Poor old Chip. Claire has brought in 12-year-old Chip for his regular health check. Hello. Hello. How are you, gorgeous? Hi, you nice to see you. So the biggest cat in Richmond. Yes, is here for his full health check. His full yeah. health check. And <laughs> look how keen he is. Yeah. <laughs> Claire was one of the very first people to walk through the practice doors when we opened six years ago. And we've been through real highs and real deep lows. Come on, big boy, in you come. Two years ago, Claire was walking her three dogs on the beach in Cornwall when they were hit by a freak wave. Two of the dogs, Sprout and Scruffy, were washed out to sea and drowned. Let me just have a little listen, good boy. Whenever she comes into the practice, I love seeing her, but I'm always a little bit nervous that I might find something that'll break her heart again. So he's been generally healthy, yes, happy boy. Yes, apart from the ongoing asthma, which you know about, he's been yeah. fine. It's like having a snow leopard in my consult room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so no surprises that he's got a bit of a raspy chest, but that all okay. sounds lovely. Yep. All right, so let's have a little feel of your tummy. All right, big boy. Good boy. Sure everything's okay. Yeah, I can definitely feel uh, um, a thickening, for want of a better word, in his abdomen, right up the top there, right sort of near the right. diaphragm. What does the thickening mean? Well, I don't really have an explanation as to what actually it is, right. because he's not giving us any information, he's not telling us that anything ails him, but clearly I can feel something that shouldn't be there, and that does alarm me. Obviously Claire's shocked that I found this fibrous tissue. I don't know what it is and that's really difficult to tell an owner because I know that Claire's immediately going to be very concerned. So Claire, what I think we need to do with your gentle giant is have him in today and just go on a bit of a fact-finding mission. So right. Give him an anaesthetic to be able to do an x-ray and then see where we're at. Okay. Right, so not really the usual general health check kind of fare where I give him a worming tablet no, and you off know, he go. No, he has a history of not breathing under anaesthetic as well, so I'm a bit concerned about an anaesthetic. Yeah, yeah, I mean, him having asthma does complicate matters, absolutely. Um, but if we have to go forward with potentially opening him up, which hopefully won't have to, but if we have to, of course he needs to be yeah. under anaesthetic. I was expecting to say, oh yeah, we know he has asthma and everything else is fine and head on home. So, yeah, I wasn't ready for him to have to have an anaesthetic today. Oh, Chippy. Poor old man. Right, so Good bye, luck, mummy. boy. And we'll see you later, because you're going to be totally fine. Yeah. Say bye, mum. Bye-bye. Good boy. Hopefully he won't find anything life-threatening, but I mean, I guess they're looking for tumours, I suppose. I feel a bit sick. All right, well, let's give you some anaesthetic some medication. Yeah. Chip is a very old boy, and he has had issues with anaesthetics in the past, but unfortunately, where this fibrous tissue is, is so deep and so central that I really can't have him moving at all if I'm to look at it properly. Okay, still breathing, still mm -hmm. breathing, good. Nurse okay. Sam is assisting Scott with Chip's X-ray. X-ray. If you keep an eye on him and I'll just run this through. The spectrum of what we're dealing with with Chip is pretty wide. There's all sorts of different possibilities here from completely benign to horrendous. So unfortunately, I can see a shadow, something that shouldn't really be there underneath the stomach. 
uh, and it's a bit of a mystery. So I think we're going to have to perform surgery. OK, sweetheart, let's see what's going on with you. <laughs> At her home in Chertsey, practice manager Maz is preparing to bring her two tortoises in with her to work. So this is Alan and Steve. They are collectively known as the kids. And they were actually given to me by my sister because she knew that I was desperate for, for tortoises and she knew someone who was looking to rehome theirs. So she surprised me with them one day. Despite their names, Steve and Alan are sisters. I didn't know they were girls when I named them, but they don't seem to mind. They don't object too much. You don't mind, do you? No. No. <laughs> Maz's fur baby, Branston, is equally besotted by the girls. Branston absolutely loves them. He goes up, says hello to them, takes his ball over to play with them and doesn't quite understand why they don't want to chase it. If either of them go missing in the garden or bury themselves under something, he normally finds them and, uh, and lets us know where they are. Steve and Alan may not look like the adventurous types, but Maz recently found them in a neighbour's garden, so she's decided they need to be microchipped. All right, kids. Should we go see Auntie Nathan? Yes. Today, yes. Maz is taking the tortoises you. to Scott's surgery right. to see resident reptile expert Nathan. And you, Steve. While they're and at then. the practice, there's another issue she wants Nathan to look at. Yeah, Nathan, to check your underbite. Yeah. Steve has an underbite, so I like to get Nathan just to check that it's all going well, he can still eat OK. Right, kids? There we go. Nathan, how's our boy doing OK? Doing well, safe so far. OK, mate, that's yeah. perfect. Scott and Nurse Nathan are about to begin surgery on Maine Coon Cat Chip to investigate a worrying lump in his abdomen. I look forward to a day I don't need to anaesthetise this cat again. <laughs> Performing an exploratory laparotomy is basically unzipping a cat's abdomen and having a look in and just seeing what's in there. Let's see what we find, shall we? Sometimes you'll be surprised and it won't be anything that you should worry about. Sometimes it's a nightmare. It's a very full stomach. It's quite strange. Looking and feeling at this stomach, the stomach does seem angry and there's something in there that feels not like food. It's very solid and very stodgy. Okay, so we're just gonna open up this stomach now and uh, see what's in there. Oh my God, look at that thing. Oh my God, look at that thing. Wow, okay. In Richmond, Scott has just opened up 12-year-old cat Chip's stomach and made an alarming discovery. This thing is extraordinary. And it's also something that you don't really see very often. What is that? It's the biggest fur ball I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh my god. Fur balls are produced when cats groom themselves. They swallow the fur and then it accumulates in the gut. This thing is so huge though, he must have consumed that fur over years, filling up his entire stomach. Absolute madness. And it's thoroughly gross. There we go. That's not even all of it. Oh, and it reeks as well. <coughs> oh, man, it's rancid. Oh, my God, it's still coming. Here we go, it's still coming. Oh, my God, look at that! Oh, it's like some sort of swamp wow. monster. Jeez, that is unbelievable. <laughs> you know what? Even though that is thoroughly gross, that is good news. This means that Chip is going to be a healthy boy. So, happy days. Okay, um, let's wake the boy up. There we go. That's the problem. Oh. Laser. Oh. Do you think I could have some? <laughs> yeah, you, you need some. We can do a transplant from Chip to your head. 
Up until the point that I'd opened Chip's stomach, I was quite concerned and quite worried for Chip's future. In this case, I found something massive and hairy and gross, and I got rid of it. I'm very happy. Okay. Your mummy's going to be very happy, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she is. She's going to have a boy for a bit longer yet. Chip will need to stay at the it's clinic right, overnight boy. to make good sure boy. he recovers well from his oh, anaesthetic before going home with Anna go. Claire tomorrow. Good lad. I cannot wait to deliver Chip back to Claire. She is going to be just so happy and relieved to know that her boy is OK. And then I can't wait to see her face when I show her that hairy baby. She is going to freak out. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Sleep it off. Good chap. Morning, Gigi. Your butler service is here. Do you want to have a little bit of food? 24 hours after undergoing a liver biopsy, miniature dachshund Gigi is ready to go home. Have a little bit of chicken? Hmm? Hmm? Maybe not to Madame's taste? Hmm? Uh, she'll be right. She'll, she'll be, be fine. fine. I can't wait to see her. God. Good morning, morning. Kirsty. How are you? Well, right. Gigi's owners, TV stars Steph and Dom, can't wait to be reunited with their little girl. It's Scott, we'll just bring her up here and take a seat. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank we'll you, do. we'll do. Thank you. It's all right. Well, much more upbeat today, because um, she's obviously not dead. It um, felt very odd not having her in the house. One of us slightly more stressed than the other. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's because I love her more than you do. No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. I do. No, I was just cooler about it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, little lady. I think I can hear Mummy and Daddy upstairs. Come on, then. Good girl. Glamping with that on the back of a truck? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Unless I can plug my hairdryer in, I'm not going. Hi! Hey! <laughs> Look! Look at you! Look at Ken! Where's your Ken Shane? What have we done to you? I dare not put a uh, cone on such a fashionable creature <laughs> as young Gigi here. Oh, I just couldn't get closer if she tried. Oh, no. Screech. So, now, guys, we do need to just all be patient and be brave until we get the results mm -hmm. of that liver biopsy. I've had her on a drip overnight. I've started her off on a special medication to help to manage her liver health, and that seems to have made a difference. But obviously, we all have a nervous wait Hopefully, it'll be good news and Gigi will make a full recovery. All right. We'll see you later, Gigi. Be a good girl. Bye, gorgeous. Don't to worry too much, John. Pleasure. All right. We'll see you guys in a few days, yeah? Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye, Bye team. Bye. Cheerio. Thanks very much. Bye. We're free. All right. Have Let's a nice go. Cup of tea. Oh, oh, it's a screech. Morning. Hello, love. That's not filing for me, is it? <laughs> it's not filing. <laughs> okay. It's a whole other job. Oh, hello. Practice manager Maz has arrived at the Richmond practice with some very special cargo. Should you go down and see Nathan? Come on, then. See you later. See you in a bit. Bye. Nathan's an absolute geek when it comes to anything slightly reptilian, so he's got to be your go-to man when you need something done to your tortoises, that's for sure. Hello. Hi. Good, thank you. So I've uh, been expecting something. You have. <laughs> it's the kids. <laughs> da da. Stephen Allen. Yep. So what are they in for today? Most importantly, microchipping, because Allen started to be a little adventurous with where he's going. It's amazing how they do escape. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I never thought having a tortoise meant actually having to keep an eye on them because they could get out quickly. Yeah. I sort of thought that was the point of having tortoises, that <laughs> they couldn't move quickly. So definitely microchipping, please. Um, and then just to double check that Steve's OK with his underbite. Right. Do you want to do the microchip first? Let's microchip. Yeah. I'm ready for this. Excellent. I am your assistant. So obviously normally in cats and dogs, we do it in between the shoulder blades. Yeah. Might be a little bit hard. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, so in tortoises, we normally do it in the hind leg, in okay. the left hind leg, and it goes just above there. I've never seen a tortoise get microchipped before, so this is brand <laughs> new for me. So it's really important that we microchip them now, like anything, especially something you keep in the garden. No one knows quite how they disappear, but it does happen occasionally. And I think now having the microchip gives that a little bit of security. 
There we go. But if they do go wandering, then we'll be able to find them. With the microchipping complete, Nathan can now address Steve's underbite. So that's quite so, impressive, that. It's quite an underbite. Mm. An underbite is caused by an overgrown lower jaw, which can make eating tricky. I can see she goes towards food, but pushes it away because you can't actually grip to it. Yeah. Maz wants to make sure Steve's underbite isn't stopping her from getting enough food, especially with hibernation season approaching. So what I think I might do is just take a little bit off there just off the bottom beak, just to help her eat and make it a little bit easier. So it's more of a closed mouth rather than there being an obvious underbite to it? Yeah, so instead of having like a shovel <laughs> and having to eat <laughs> over the shovel, yeah. um, she should be able to eat a little better. Okay, yep. Yeah. To trim the beaks, I'm going to use a dental machine and the burr which we often trim rabbit's teeth down with. So I need as still as possible. Okay, I can do this. Trimming the beak doesn't hurt at all. I guess it's just like cutting your fingernails. It just takes the edge off of it without drilling too much away. Perfect. But I think you can see already that there's... You can see, from the top you can see. Yeah. It's not that scoop like you were talking about. Yeah. So I think now you've got a better chance. All done, tortoises are chipped and clean bill of health and, and they're both good. They're, they're ready to enjoy the rest of the summer before they Go back to sleep again for a few months. <laughs> All right, say thank you to Auntie Nathan. Thanks. Say thank you. More, more, more. <laughs> Later that day, Scott is on his way between practices when he receives an urgent SOS. So I've just had a call from one of my nurses, Nathan, up at Richmond. He said he's just admitted one of our patients, Freddie, who is in a really bad way. He's just gone under about three or four cars and he's really unwell, so I'm heading up there now. Come on, let's get there. Nathan is closely monitoring the three-year-old Italian Greyhound until Scott arrives. Just downstairs. Freddie's all right. Good. How you doing? Hi, Scott. What have we got? His temperature's 36.5 at the moment, so I'm just trying to bring that up. I put him on fluids. His oxygen level's low in his blood as well. Freddie? His eyes are really red as well, where, they, yeah, where the blood see. vessels are burst. Look at that. There's a huge amount of bruising around that eye. That's really bad. He's bruising and even in his ear. Look at that. So poor little Freddie is really in a terrible state. He is very, very flat indeed. So I'm very concerned this dog has suffered some kind of head trauma. Oh my God. Look at how bruised he is. Poor oh boy, poor oh boy. Oh, that hurts a bit, doesn't it? Okay, okay. It's all right. Your mummy must be so worried. Eh? Anxiously waiting upstairs is Freddie's traumatised owner. Ivana was walking her six dogs in a local park when Freddie escaped. I didn't even know he'd gone. A passerby said to me, have you lost a dog? And because one's just been hit on the road, I knew it was him immediately. <sighs> so I raced over to the gate. And as I'm standing there, absolutely hysterical, the dog got hit by two other cars. And then one truck went over him and another truck. So I thought, well, the dog's dead. Just then, another passerby came to her aid. This guy literally stepped out onto the North Circular in the rush hour, arms up, stopped the traffic, and uh, scooped him up and said, he's alive, he's breathing. Scott now urgently needs to X-ray Freddy to look for any head injuries and also see if there are any broken bones. Oh, it's just awful, isn't it? Poor boy. 
With Freddie laid out on the x-ray table, you can really see the full spectacle of what this accident has caused this poor little creature. He is so covered in bruises. I don't think ever in my experience have I seen a dog so bruised as little Freddie. So Nathan, I'm just gonna take an x-ray of his head and neck. So I'm just spin him around this way, good boy. X-ray. So this is the, the fragment of bone there, and there's just a line here that I don't like the look of. So the wheels have likely gone over the top of him and have fractured his pelvis. But the fact that none of his other limbs are broken is incredible. But the biggest concern for me now is why Freddy is so, so very flat. And I think the problem is within the brain itself. Okay, come on through. Here's your boy. He's still very sad. Oh my God. Who's that? It's horrible to see him the way he is. All right, shh, okay. The good news is there's no fractures or broken bones in the head, in the neck, which is great. Amazed. But he does have fractures in his pelvis, I'm afraid. I'm hoping that just with time and rest, they may heal okay. on their own, but we'll have to wait and see. What I'm majorly concerned about is the fact that he is so weak at the moment. We can't assess what other neurological symptoms he may have. He can feel all of his limbs, but he's certainly not moving all of his limbs. And so until he starts doing that, we won't know mm. what damage has been done. Hey, you silly boy. Freddie will need to remain at the practice until the extent of his brain injury becomes clear. I just don't know how badly damaged it'll be. It may be that it permanently affects the ability to walk, uh, his memory, even his personality. Oh, Fred. Oh, no, I know. You're going to have to stay here for a while, buddy. You'll see you are. you. Hello, buddy. Hello, sweetheart. Gosh, you're looking better, aren't you? Look at you trying to use your legs. Hey? Two days after Freddie's road accident, Scott is checking on the Italian Greyhound's progress. Look how much brighter this boy is today. Thank hey. you. Yeah, he's a little bit sore still, which is why he's panting a little bit. But, I mean, look at him. Hey, he's standing. Amazing. Look at how bruised he is. Oh, that hurts a bit, doesn't it? Okay. The three-year-old ran into busy traffic and was left with a broken pelvis and extensive bruising. Good boy. It's all right. I just want to do a few neurological tests on his body. Good boy. While the pelvic fractures should heal over time, Scott's worried the three-year-old may have swelling on the brain, or worse, a permanent brain injury. Come here, sweetheart. OK. So he's doing some tests to check for brain activity. OK, ready? Just see what you're doing here. Good boy. Well done. What I'm doing is just putting his knuckles on the ground and just seeing if he'll right the foot. Good boy. OK, so this is the one that I'm concerned about. Good boy. But the right hind leg is a little slow to right. Now, if it was that he's had major trauma on the right hand side and there's been some swelling to the nerves, uh, that swelling can impede the ability of the impulses to get to the brain. But with a reduction in the swelling, hopefully we're gonna see the nerves talking to the brain again. Scott now feels the best place for him is at home with Ivana. He's improved so much that I think Scott's going to let him go home with me tonight. So I'm really, really happy. I can't wait to see him. Hiya. Hey, Fred. This is hey, your boy. Fred, stop. Hey, you got to spoil Hey, who's that? Who's that? Oh. He's so much brighter. It's just... It's a miracle. Yeah. 
come from the dog lying in the road with cars hitting him and two trucks going over to here in the space of a few days is just incredible. You know, massive strides. But one thing I would say is brain injury can, of course, change personalities alongside cause numerous neurological problems. So what we need to do is just be patient okay. and let these next few days and weeks run through. And then we can work out, does he have long-term issues that we need to manage? Yvonne is a very practical owner. She understands that her dog has suffered a major trauma and he's not gonna get better overnight, but hopefully everything is starting to come back. All right, so you get home and get well and I'll see you very soon. Yes, I will. All right, Ivana. Okay, brilliant. All the best. Thanks very much. No Thank worries. You. It's been a pleasure. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. He's looking more like Fred now than he was a few days ago. Fingers crossed that he makes it to a full recovery. <laughs> Another client, Claire, is also returning to the Richmond practice, excited about picking up her boy, Chip, after his big stomach operation. I can't wait to see him. Um, really missed him overnight. But I'm happy to know that he's OK. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting him back home. Should we go see Mummy? Come on. Ready? Oh, he's a big boy. Oh, he's a big boy. Come on. Oh. Yeah, the anticipation is huge. What is in Chip's stomach? So yeah, I need to know the answer. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Your boy. There he is. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, I missed you. Go on then. Do you want to have a oh, cuddle yeah. with mummy? Come on then. Come on, you big lump. There we go. Oh, you got him. There he is. Oh. So what is in his stomach? Uh, I think you need to see it with your own eyes. Okay. So just give me one second. Oh, chippy chip. What have you eaten? What's in your tummy? So, um, so my jacket will give you a little bit of a yes. hint as to what this is. Oh! It is the biggest hairball I've seen in my entire 20-year career. Yeah, you were never going to get all of that out the normal way. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a relief that it was just a hairball, albeit a very large one, and I don't need to worry about cancer or any other threatening illnesses. Which brings me to my next suggestion with regards to his treatment, which is... Um, shaving. He needs a new do, the boy. He needs no, a new no, do. No, I was joking. You're not seriously going to shave him. He, he needs to be clipped. We don't want this to happen again. I'll brush him more. You, you'll brush him more? <laughs> seriously? We I'm brush, not shaving him. We brushed him this morning. Claire is honestly one of the best owners that we have. She does everything I ask to the lesson. But this time around, there was definitely a little bit of pushback. Just a new haircut for summer, you know? I'm not convinced by this. <laughs> Usually I agree with everything you say immediately, I and I'm this not. Is the first time we've oh, Yeah, out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be recommending a new hairstyle for Chip without good reason. So if we can just reduce the amount of hair he's covered in, I think that he's going to ingest less and therefore I won't need to go back in and remove another monstrous hairball. Come Let's on. Let's get you home. I mean, he's to organise that hair appointment. Oh, well, think about that. I will consider the shaving because I can see that it's going to be best for his health. Boy. Yeah, I'm really not happy about cutting off all his lovely fur, though. Bye, Chip. Thanks. Come you on. beautiful, big, Let's go. hairy boy. I mean, look at me, honestly. Oh, might need that. <laughs> Good plan. Might help. <laughs> As you can tell, you know. I know, she's shivering. <laughs> she's not the only one, it's cold. A little bit chilly. Come on then. Come on. Here we go. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, you two. Mwah. How are you? Hey, you Thank You're you. right, nice sir. Good. good to see you. And you? Three You're days well, after well, the liver well. biopsy on Daxun Zhizhi, her owners, Steph and Dom, are back at the practice to hear the results. I have a report on you, my love. <laughs> so oh, really? Ooh. I oh, think oh, mum and dad will be quite interested to hear. Oh. Wow, that's ominous. Jeez oh. oh. <laughs> Louise, what are you going to tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. I'm personally quite terrified to hear what the results are because I've got a bad feeling about it because I've seen Dr. Scott's face and 
You can read his face, I think, very well, and he's as worried as I am, so I'm... I don't know, I haven't been able to sleep very well. So I know you've uh, been putting a brave face on, mm. but I do have the report regarding the biopsy we took on little Gigi. And the news is good. There shouldn't be any lasting issue. Oh, thank so. God. Oh. There you go. Thank you. It's good it? weed. You're going to be all right, my darling. Oh, my God. Yes. So I'm hoping that although Gigi has swallowed a little morsel, which is toxic and has damaged her liver, given time and the medication I've prescribed, her liver should return to normal function. Thank goodness for the regenerative powers of the liver, and I, I couldn't think of two better people to advocate <laughs> that. <laughs> Well, the irony is quite something, isn't it? Could I have some of those pills, please? <laughs> yeah. The relief is unbelievable. She's fine. She's absolutely fine. She's obviously ingested something really horrible. God knows what that is. But there is no cancer. There's no awful stuff lurking in the shadows. So we're going to go to the pub <laughs> and celebrate. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. There you go. A little celebratory drink. Yes. I think so. But not really yes. Yes. Let's go to the pub. Yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I think he looks great, and I think the, the hairdo suits him, mate. <laughs> but I'm just really glad He's you He's still got me. his beautiful face. I'm just on my way to go and visit a very stressed family about a very stressed dog. Oberon's a, quite an old Hungarian Vizsla who is suffering with some breathing difficulties and lately it's so bad that he can't even walk down to the practice without being out of breath. And I just hope there's something that I can do to help. It's okay, Scott's on his way. Poor Obi. Oberon is so unwell and struggling to walk his owner's mother and daughter, Sue and Susanna, He's a good boy. have asked Scott to make the special house call. Oh, hi, Sue. Oh, hi, Scott. You're all right. What's up? Thank you so up? much for coming so quickly. It's okay. Come in and see Oberon. He's really not very well. Okay. Please come in. All right. Thank you. Will do. Oberon's in here. Hi, Obi. Hi, Susanna. Hello, How are you? You're all right. Thank you. Hello, champ. <laughs> What's been going on? Last Sunday, he went out into the garden and collapsed in the flower bed. It started it's off with really a choke. Cold, yeah, and then his gums went pale and then it was going blue and he wasn't oh, wow. breathing. Mm. And it was an awful, awful, desperate situation. We thought we might actually even lose him. So it was really frightening. I can imagine. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just shown the other symptoms that have carried on. Yes, well, when he gets a bit agitated, um, especially when there's food around and he's expecting to be fed, he sort of starts jumping about. And then he finds it difficult to breathe and starts coughing a bit. So yes, we're very worried about him. Has his bark changed at all? Definitely, he's become yeah, more much, hoarse. Yeah, it's much hoarser, quieter, yeah. Yeah, it's not as loud as um, bark anymore. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there's a number of possible respiratory conditions. There's some cardiac conditions, of course, it could be. But the concern that I have is that he may have a condition called laryngeal paralysis. He's got all the classic symptoms and also he's quite an old boy and it does tend to happen in older dogs as well. The larynx is the cartilaginous box, the voice box in the throat, and the nerves that supply it sometimes fail to work. And as a result, the larynx is then unable to open properly to allow a decent amount of air into the lungs. So it means not only does his bark sound different, but he's actually unable to open his airways up enough to take in enough yeah, oxygen. Yeah. So any form of heat or any form of stress leads to this old boy having some problems. Hey, buddy. I think the fact that Oberon has collapsed in his very own garden just doing what old dogs do, which is not much, is incredibly concerning. And I do feel that I need to take him to the practice to understand this condition more and work out exactly what we're going to do to fix it. Good boy. Out we go. Come on then, buddy. Come on. We've had Oberon all his life. We got him when he was a puppy. If we lost Oberon, I think we would be absolutely heartbroken. We know he's an old boy, but uh, he's so loved and he's part of the family. Let's go to the practice. Good boy. Don't worry, darling. Be all right. Can I have that ball, please? Come on, puppy. Come on. He's a good birthday boy. At a local park, it's Springer Spaniel Jack's birthday, and he's enjoying a play in the sun. Good boy! With his devoted owner, Francine. Oh, he's nearly got it. And her partner, Jo. It's behind Jack! You. Where's the ball? Jack! Where's the ball? He's 12 today. We adopted him when he was six months old from a sanctuary back in Oxfordshire. Good boy. I was about 13 at the time. So I've grown up with Jack. But birthday celebrations have been put on hold because Jack needs surgery. Good boy. Jack's always been a really healthy dog, but when he was about four, he developed a fatty lump on one of his back paws. Good boy. We've been told that those lipomas, they're harmless, so you can just leave them unless they're causing other issues. Go on, then. Oh, you're excited, aren't you? He's had quite a few pop up over the years. But now I think the ones on his shoulder are getting so big that they're getting in the way of his legs and his walking and things. Come on, then, Jackie. Francine is terrified at the prospect of her much-loved boy undergoing surgery after a previous scare. Good boy. It was the anaesthetic he reacted to, but he was out of it for quite a few days. So he'd get up 
to walk over to you and fall over or vomit. It wasn't very nice. He was really poorly. Come on, Come Jack. Jack. Let's go for a nice walk. I'm really nervous about taking him to vets. He's my only Jack. Jack means the whole world to me. Um, he's my best friend. No offence. Um, <laughs> And I don't know, I just can't imagine not having him around. I love you, Jack. He is our extra housemate. Yeah, massive part of the family. Jack has an appointment with Scott tomorrow for the lipoma surgery. You're going to be a good boy tomorrow, Jack. He's a good birthday boy. Good boy. Be careful when you're picking him up, but we need him up here on the table, please. OK. Good boy. Come on, lad. Yay, good hey. lad. Well done. At the Richmond practice, hey. Scott needs to find out why elderly dog Oberon collapsed at home and has been struggling to breathe. So, we're going to have to take some of your blood and then we're going to try and do some x-rays. Okay. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Nurse Nathan will be assisting with Oberon's tests. Good boy. Chill, don't you, hey? That's it. Good boy, Obi. Well done. Well done. Scott suspects the 13-year-old's breathing difficulties may be due to a paralysed larynx. Right, okay, sweetheart. Good boy. Stay still. Hey. Good boy. X-ray. Yeah. But first, he has to rule out any other possibilities. Just taking some x-rays of Oberon's chest just to see if there's any reason for his sudden collapse and his respiratory issues. So his lungs are pretty clear, his heart looks normal, so the problem isn't in his chest. Blood three at night, let's bring them up. Wow, he's a pretty healthy boy. Looking at the blood test, generally Oberon's an incredibly healthy boy for 13. I mean, it's a great old age for a Hungarian Vizsla. I hope our blood's looking like that when I'm his age. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Doing the x-rays and all the blood testing that we've done has basically ruled out every other possible cause of Oberon's respiratory distress besides laryngeal paralysis. Scott is hoping to avoid surgery on the elderly dog, so he's called his good mate, specialist surgeon Michael Hamilton, for a second opinion. Hey, Scotty. Hey, Michael. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, he's not as bad as I thought he was going to be. Well, you're paying for my speeding ticket, mate. <laughs> uh, fair so, enough, fair enough. Well, his owners are pretty worried. He yeah. did collapse yeah. at the family home a week ago. Yeah. And he's showing some fairly classic signs of laryngeal paralysis. So yeah. his, his bark has changed. He's doing a strange sort of throat clearing. Yeah. And every time he gets excited or stressed, yeah. he starts having issues with his breathing and yeah. struggles to get breath. Yeah, change of barks, highly suspicious. Yeah. Can I just have a quick listen to him? Absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's pretty raspy around his larynx, isn't he? Good boy. He's nice and relaxed on his meds, isn't he? Yeah. But a little charge around the park and he goes blue, right? Yeah. That's pretty much it. You got his x-rays and things? Yeah, so we've taken some chest x-rays. They all look fine. Yeah. Uh, but what we need to do, of course, is give him his anaesthetic. So I thought I'd wait for you. Yeah, and have a look. Before making a decision on whether or not to operate, Scott and Michael need to have a close look at Oberon's oh, larynx to see how Just well it's enough. functioning. Okay, sweetheart. For this, he's been given just a light anaesthetic. To fully assess Oberon, he needs to actually be awake, which does mean that he can bite down on our hands as we're checking him over. Just Watch your fingers, because yeah, it's going to be will, quite he, light. He next. will be chompy, yeah. so. Okay. So look. So when he breathes in, what mm. should happen is his airway should open. Yeah. If it's paralysed when he breathes in, he sucks it closed. Mm. So, Nath, tell me when he's breathing in and breathing out. So go in and out as he breathes in, in and out. In, out. Mm. In. Yeah, it's out. not doing much. No. In. Looking down this dog's airway, there's no movement at all. And so as he's trying to breathe, his airways should be pulled open. But actually what happens is they just sit there. And as he breathes and sucks air in, they actually get sucked closed. So he's got bilateral, both sides, paralysis of his larynx. And dogs can die from this. So it's a, it's a, bit, of a, a bit of a ticking time bomb. Right, so surgery it is then? Yeah, sure. Right. Okay. Um, I'll go get changed, mate, if you go get yep. tube. We'll see. See you in a second. Right, see you in a second. Oberon will now be given a full anaesthetic, and Scott and Michael can immediately proceed with the delicate surgery. 
The procedure that we're going to be performing today is called a laryngeal tieback. It's a very complicated procedure and it comes with lots of risks. I'll just be there to tell you to cut that cricorytenoid. Yeah. That's, the, that's the only scary bit, really. Today I'm going to be the lead surgeon, but Michael is very much my able right-hand man. So, keep feeling for that wing of the thyroids, because that's basically where you're aiming. That's, that's where you need to go to. Some big things in there, jugular veins, big nerves. So, um, yeah, you just got to make sure you know where you're at. Ready to go. Go for it, buddy. Stage one, rule one, don't yeah. put the jugular. Go for it, Manny. That's it. Just want to cut that. Yeah, and then a little bit backwards. In Richmond, Scott and specialist surgeon Michael Hamilton have started life-saving surgery on 13-year-old Vizsla Oberon. So, so there's some okay. decent vessels in here, so just be careful. The elderly dog's larynx isn't opening properly, and he's been struggling to breathe. See that little fella? Yeah. Don't, don't cut that. No. That's the branch of the jugular, so I'll get him up here out of the way. There you go. The procedure is something called a laryngeal tieback. It's incredibly complicated, with a whole bunch of muscles and a lot of really important blood vessels and nerves around, so it does make for a very risky surgery. Now for the really scary bit. So you've got your process there. Mm -hmm. And if you put your finger just behind that muscular process and there's a little depression, that is actually the joint that you're going to disarticulate. And then we're going to stitch the arytenoids in a different place. Yeah. But it's, it's quite a tough joint, but it's a joint nonetheless. You need to just free it up a little bit. So just use your forceps on there and then just cut forwards just a little bit. That's it. That's lovely. Nice work, sir. So we're at a pretty pivotal stage of the surgery. What we've done is separated the inner bit of cartilage, which means that I can now grab hold of the muscular process we uncovered and actually then lasso it to that middle cartilage. And by doing so, we're opening up the larynx and pulling away that uh, vocal fold away from the centre. Yes. Nice. 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 So you just got to tie it now and that's it. Yep. I'm just going to hold that ever so gently like finger on a parcel. Done. Nice. 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 Happy with that. Nice. Or as the Geordies say, lush. <laughs> <laughs> so there is our laryngeal tieback. Uh, a massive surgery with lots of complications and all the boils down to is just one little suture that's going to make all the difference in the yeah. world. Good job. Looking good. I'm just closing up, so um, yeah, Oberon says thank you and so do I, yeah. but you can head off. No worries. No worries. Thanks, mate. Okay, all good. Mate, nice I'll see working you. with I'll you. I'll see you soon. Bye, mate. See ya. It went well. Didn't cut any white stringy things, as in the nerves. So, best case scenario, future for Oberon is uh, he will wake up and can't believe how well he can breathe. And within a couple of weeks, just when everything's settled down, he's flying around the park like he never has done before. Okay, now to see if the job's done. Oh, yeah, look at the difference. That's massive. It's a massive relief to actually see that his larynx is now much more open. This is an old boy that's had a great life and I want him to have a life going forward. And he can only do that when he has an open airway. And now, thankfully, he does. That was a long one, wasn't it, mate? Hey? Oberon will spend the night under observation at the clinic to make sure he's fit enough to go home to his owners in the morning. You huff and you puff, old boy, hey? At least you can breathe now. Yeah. No more collapsing for you. Nathan, look at the day. Downstairs at the clinic, new mum Ellie and her two fragile newborns are getting some TLC with Nurse Nathan and practice manager Maz after being brought in for a health check. That one's a bruiser. It's the bigger one. I make you. Ellie's owner, Victoria, has had a worrying few hours, concerned that the new little arrivals aren't feeding properly. They are pretty small. <laughs> oh, one is especially. So, yeah, I'm quite nervous about that. 
The young Bichon Frise gave birth overnight. Good girl, Ellie. But so far, her two little pups have been unable to latch on by themselves for their all-important first feed. Come on, Ellie, look. I'm gonna feed the babies. Come on, sweetie, see if you can do it. Oh, good girl, Ellie. So Nathan and practice manager Maz are helping out the first-time mum. That's it, just a little more down there, sweetie. Come on. Oh, nearly. Yay! You got it? Yay, yeah, well we done. Got it. Oh, there we go. It's amazing. No one teaches them when she's there feeding her babies. It was all just this really beautiful thing to actually witness. We got them both on? Yeah, that's two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holding those tiny pups is just like nothing else. They're small, they're Eyes aren't open, they're just brand new, tiny little balls of yumminess that you just kind of want to squeeze harder than you should. With the pups now feeding well, a delighted Maz can't wait to show owner Victoria the hungry little boys. <laughs> Hello. <Aww. laughs> wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Proud mummy moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Been a very good mummy. I'm very proud. <laughs> to walk out my office and see this beautiful mum with her two lovely tiny little puppies, it would make anybody's day, but I've got to say, it's, it's the perks of the job that you get every now and then, just, just getting that little insight into brand new life in the world. With full bellies and a clean bill of health, the contented pups are now ready for a snooze. The new little family will head home with Victoria later today. Well done. Such a clever girl. Good boy, well done. Mm, you're breathing very well this morning, aren't you, eh? Yeah. Oberon is recovering well from his big surgery. Good boy. Hey. Wouldn't know you've been through a major surgery, hey? No, you wouldn't, no. Yesterday, the 13-year-old Vizsla underwent a risky throat operation to correct the paralyzed larynx that was closing his airway. Yes. Wait a minute. Here we go. You've got very nice table manners. Good boy. Yeah. Take it nice and easy. Yeah. Mummy and Grandma will be here soon. Sex size fat soon. Yep. Owners Sue and Susanna have arrived at the practice and can't wait to take their old boy home. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? We've come to pick up over on. No problem. Yeah, no, oh, thank you. For me thank you very much. Thing. All right, cheers. Last night was terrifying. We were really nervous, waiting to hear how he was, how he's pulled through. Can't wait to see him. So excited. What's oh, this? Here he comes. Oh, oh sweetheart. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh. And here's your boy. Hey, baby. Hey. Hello, baby. Oh, boy, yes. Hello. Oh. Who's that? Oh. Hey. Oh. Take care, oh. my lovely. Oh. So he's done very, very well. Um, he's obviously going to still be making a little bit of noise after the surgery. Yeah. Just because of the fact that he's had a tube down his throat and also major surgery on his neck. But uh, I'm very happy with the result. The surgery went really well. Uh, and now his larynx is tied back on the left-hand side. So it's basically like if he's got sliding doors, one sliding door is now pulled in the open position all the time. Now that Oberon's going home, he does need some very specialised care because basically he has an airway which is permanently latched open. So he is exposed to the possibility that he could breathe in food and cause severe distress. So one thing Sir will be requiring is his food needs to be now hand fed. Yeah. Uh, you need to roll it into little balls and he's going to be fed at head height. <gasps> So you get the royal treatment you are, yes. Hand fed by your own personal butler service. Yes. But other than that, this old boy should make a full recovery and be bounding around the parks of Richmond very soon. 
It's such an almighty relief, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, you're not perfect, but you can breathe. Yeah. And that's all we want. <laughs> that's, a, that's all we that's want. That's one. Yes. That's yeah. one of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right. Bye, buddy. Take care. Okay. We'll see you soon. Bye, buddy. Bye. See ya. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. Take care. Bye. All the best. Bye. See ya. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Come on, boy. Come on this way. Come on. That's a good boy. Come on then, Jack. Francine and her partner Joe. Take you out for your big day, Jack. Have arrived at Scott's Richmond Clinic with 12-year-old Jack. Hi guys, how are you? Hello. Good, thank you. And this must be Jack. This is Jack. Hello, mate. I hear it was your birthday yesterday. Yeah. And look what mum and dad got you, a vet visit. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, should we go into the console room and have yeah. a little chat? Come yeah. On, Jack. Come on then. Good Come on, buddy. Come on. I didn't really sleep very well last night, so anxious about um, what was to come today. I'm just gonna let's get him to stand up for me. Good boy. Yeah. It was a long journey here. The whole time on the train, I sat on the floor and cuddled him. I was just so nervous. So obviously, he's got lots of lumps and bumps everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, how are they affecting his quality of life? Um, they weren't, but this one in particular has gotten so big, he gets a bit limpy. Right. And you can tell he's uncomfortable in certain positions when he's laying down. Yeah, that was fair enough. I'd be uncomfortable if I had that big lump there. Yeah. I'm not concerned about what they are. I'm pretty certain they're going to be benign. But the only issue with them is when they're just getting in the way of normal function yeah. and movement. And I think that's exactly what's happening. Is that one there? He's got like a big football on his shoulder and so he can't actually extend his leg forward. And he's also got this one here, which... Uh, might be doing the same in reverse, actually, because it's mm. sort of over his shoulder blade there. What I'm finding on Jack is very large lumps of fat growing on his body, and those lumps are called lipomas. That's a benign type of tumour. They're causing a change in the way that he walks. And for an old dog, that's a problem because it can encourage arthritis. I think if we can get rid of that, he can have a good quality of life in his yeah. twilight years. But of course, we have to address that not small issue of anaesthetics in old dogs. Yeah, he had a lipoma removed actually when he was about four, but he didn't take too well to the anaesthetic. He was quite unwell, sort of being sick, couldn't really walk straight, so it was quite a worrying time, so. Yeah. Hence why I haven't had any of them removed so far, because they've not been causing him too much trouble and I just don't want to risk losing him. Yeah, so now it's become critical mass. Yeah. And it's forcing you to make that decision, but I can see in your eyes mm -hmm. you're quite nervous, aren't you? Yeah. It's better if we just be strategic, work out which ones are the most important mm -hmm. and which ones could wait. So I think that one and that one are um, big enough on their own, but yeah. I would definitely try and remove both of them. Yeah. I just think we don't want him to grow old and be in discomfort. No, exactly. Yeah. 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 Says mum with a worried look on her face. <laughs> <laughs> She's scared. She can tell, can't you? Jack's not had an operation for a really long time, and now he is that bit older. I just worry so much about him, um, so my stomach's in knots, really. I appreciate that you have trust in me regarding the anaesthetic. Yeah. But I appreciate it's a big thing for you guys. So, uh, you need to say goodbye to your boy. Ah, OK. Oh, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. The pressure's really on for Scott, because this boy means a lot to us. He's one in a million, and yeah, he's got to save my boy. I'd say it's a big lump, but I think it's a bit rude because he actually has some lumps. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You, mate? Who's this? Uh, this is Jack, and Jack has some lipomas, which you can wow. very clearly see. Yeah. So we're going to take them off, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. Let's get going. Now, just so you know, with this guy, previously he's had a bit of an issue with an anaesthetic. He struggled to recover, so we do need to just be quite careful about what drugs we use. He never give me easy anaesthetics, can I just say that? <laughs> well, you're very good at your job, Nathan, so I think you need a challenge. <laughs> just give him a breath of air. Seconds later, Scott is suddenly alarmed. Come on. 
Ah, he's not breathing. Just give him another breath of air there. As the seconds tick past, my concern is rising because at any point his heart can stop. Come on, mate. Come on. Come on, mate. Heart's still strong. He's just not breathing. Yeah. Come on, mate. Don't be lazy. Come on. In Richmond, elderly Springer Spaniel Jack has stopped breathing just moments after being given anaesthetic. Just give him another breath of air there. This is an old boy. He responded badly in the past to an anaesthetic. He's doing the same thing again, even though we're using different drugs. Let's just flip him over and see if that makes a difference. Uh, yeah, so we're just giving him some oxygen because he's just not breathing at the moment, so we just need to keep trying to encourage him to do so. The longer this process goes on, the more concerned that Jack simply will not survive this anaesthetic. Come on. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yep. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I held my breath for about three minutes in. I'm like a deep water diver. It's been a very stressful three minutes. I've definitely got more grey hairs and Nathan's definitely lost more hair as a result of this anaesthetic. I think we need to just work quickly, get these lumps out as quickly as possible and watch him like a hawk. Okay, so cutting. Scott is removing two massive lipomas or fatty lumps from Jack's shoulder. Look at that. Wow. It's a whopper. So you can see now it just wants to come out. It's like a, a nasty pee in an inappropriate pod. Come on. Here we go. Look at that. Wow. Huge. So that's one done. One to go. That, oh, here we go. Wow. Absolute whopper. So no wonder he's sore because it's actually stretching the muscle above it. So to remove this is going to make a big difference to the quality of this dog's life. It's massive, isn't it? That. It's, it's pretty weighty as well. A bit of weight loss surgery there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, closing up. Interestingly, the lipomas, they were growing within muscle which means that they would be causing quite a degree of discomfort. So actually it's incredibly rewarding to remove them because I know that Jack is going to wake up a far happier and more comfortable old boy. You gave us a bit of a scare there, didn't you? Hey? Yeah, massive relief to have this guy awake. Uh, he was a challenge, I think it's fair to say, but worth it because he is going to feel so much better now those lumps are out and so am I. He's like, I'm still disappointed about this as a birthday present. Yeah. Uh, that is an awful birthday present surgery. Oh. <laughs> I think we all deserve some cake after this. <laughs> I think so. Come on. Oh, oh. Jack will sleep off the anaesthetic before going home later today. Good boy. Thankfully, Jack is waking up very, very nicely for an old boy, but this anaesthetic is done. I definitely think that Nathan and I have earned a beer tonight. You good boy. You can't have a birthday without a beer, can you? No, you can't. Hey, Scott. Hello, mate. I've got a present for you. Oh, you shouldn't have. <laughs> I've had these left on the doorstep, and I'm hoping you can do something with them. OK, well, sounds like a bird, at <laughs> least. Should we have a look and see? Wow. I've got a good idea what species of bird they are. Vet nurse Nathan has found an unexpected package left anonymously on the clinic doorstep. You are destined to actually be a pigeon, aren't you, sweetheart? Oh. Generally, as a vet practice, we see mostly dogs and cats, but we are open to all creatures, great and small, and sometimes we're quite surprised by what walks through the door. And today, Nathan's brought down some very small baby pigeons. Hello. 
So did your mum forget where she put you? Did she? Hey. Right now, I'm quite concerned for these little baby birds. They have been exposed to a lot of stress. Their immune systems would be weakened, and obviously, without mum, they have less a chance of surviving. So how old do you think they are? Oh, they're young. They start to get some of their feathers, though, so I'd say a few weeks, yeah. Still got the um, little egg tooth, isn't they, at the front? Yeah. Oh, I know. Should we give you a little bit of food, eh? These baby birds need really intensive treatment and care. They need to be fed about every three hours around the clock, just as mum would. Here you go. The food. We're using some baby porridge, which has some long chain carbohydrates in it. It's a good form of sustenance for a baby bird and warms them up a little bit as well. I know, I know, yeah. There you go, that's good bird. Well done, well done, that's it. Here you go. Is that delicious? Here. Yeah. Ooh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Well done, well done, well done. Yeah, hey, how's that? Has that made you happy? Hmm? Feeding these little baby birds is quite a delicate process. They do seem to be taking the food quite well and you can see immediately that they are responding, they're brightening up and they seem happy in a warmer environment. Okay. Wow. <laughs> hey? Oh, oh goodness me. I like the uh, fur on the back there. Sort of the, the yellow <laughs> afro you've got going on there. Come on then, you, let's feed you up, eh? With the little birds responding well to some warmth and food, a volunteer from London Wildlife Protection is on their way. Still worthy of a chance, aren't you gorgeous? It's always lovely when the public bring in wild animals for us to look after, but so often they should just leave them alone. The mother generally knows exactly where they place their babies, and if you don't touch them and put your scent on them, they will come back and look after their own babies. Hey Chris, thanks for coming so quickly. It's all right, no problem. Um, so, no, uh, as is the season for baby animals, um, <laughs> I've got two. Oh dear, they are babies, aren't they? Yes, yes indeed. Excellent job. Thanks for That's coming and right. rescuing them. Right. You're a good man. Pleasure. That's what we're there for. Now that we've fed the babies up, I'm really hopeful that they will grow into full blown, beautiful pigeons. They've had a very tough start in life. It's a tricky road for them to go down, but hopefully they'll be fluttering around the skies of London soon. Okay, then you two. You little cuties, aren't you? Good bird, isn't it? They got a good chance, haven't they? <laughs> nice one. Thanks for dropping <laughs> Thank by. Much. See you later. You Thank look you. after them for us. Cheers. 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 Bye. Bye bye. The little orphans will be taken care of until they're strong enough to be released into the wild. Bye, guys. How are you feeling? Are you a good boy? Hmm? Jack is fully recovered from his anaesthetic, and now it's time to go home. Let's go and see Mum. Good boy. I hope he's doing OK. Mm. It's been an anxious wait for Jack's owners, Francine and Joe. So, <laughs> Hi, guys. Here's your boy. Hey. Here you go. Jackie. Hello. 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 Happy little thing. Oh, thank you so much. He's doing good. Oh, God, I'm so relieved. Mm. I've never been so nervous. It felt like the longest few hours of my life, but I'm just so relieved to have him back to normal. He's a little bit dopey, but he looks really good. So, as you can see, he's looking quite svelte now. He's lost a little bit of weight. Do you want to see what he lost? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I warned you. Got a strong stomach, it's okay. So there. Wow. Wow. Oh, poor mm. Jack. So they're just fat? Just fat, mm. yeah. To have that much weight on either side of one joint, you really understand why he was struggling and why it was having such an impact on him. Must have been really making him uncomfortable, so he's going to be so much happier now. All right. Are you going to get up? Time Come to go. Jack. Come on, then. Come on, Here you go. Have a proper birthday Good party now. boy. <laughs> it's still a pretty rubbish birthday present. He couldn't even have a cake, bless him. I have to give him one. Bye, Jack. Oh, he's very keen to leave. <laughs> See ya. Bye. A nice old boy. There we are. Luca and Trish have arrived at Scott's Isleworth Clinic with a special little passenger. Hi. Hi. 
We're here with Pepe. Where is Pepe? He's in the bag. Oh, let's see him. There he is. Hello. <laughs> oh, look at you. Should we have a cuddle? Little guinea pig Pepe is unwell, so he's been booked in for an appointment. Hi, what's all that noise? Hi, Trisha. Hi, Luca. Hi. Hi. You've given little Pepe to Jeannie. You're never going to get it back now. <laughs> wow. Well, you yeah. love a guinea pig, don't you? I love guinea pigs. They're my favourite. Aren't they? Hello, mate. <laughs> Hello. Guinea pigs are an incredibly popular pet here in the UK. They're a great yeah. family pet. They're a lovely, friendly animal. They're great with kids, but they're really good also for people that don't have gardens and have a small space to live in. Come on, guys. Let's pop on in. OK. Come on. Luca and Trish yeah. are so devoted to Pepe, they've learned how to communicate with the little guinea pig. They've got excited, which is... <whistles> busy, which is... Uh... It was Pepe's sounds that first alerted them that he wasn't well. Are you uh, a little bit uncomfortable, mate, are you? Hey, let's just have a little head-to-toe examine of you. If I get one of you just to, just to hold him around the shoulders there. So when he pees, he makes a weaking sound, which sounds a bit like... <whistles> so I can tell he also hunches his back a little bit when he pees. I'm very worried about him, you know. It's like when your child is sick, you just want them to be happy, you want them to be healthy. Hey, OK, let's spin you around. Hey, look adoringly at Mum and Dad. There we go. All right, I'm just going to have a little feel of his tummy now. Straight away he's uncomfortable at that, isn't he? Mm. Oh, you don't like your bladder being touched, do you? I mean, fair enough. If you're up for it, I think what's probably a good idea is I'll just do a quick ultrasound. We'll have a look and see if there's anything lurking in that little guinea pig bladder of yours, my friend. You see that black circle? That's the bladder. So what it is, is basically he's got what looks like a little stone. Urinary calculi or bladder stones occur in guinea pigs for a number of different reasons, but most of the time it's dietary. There's lots of different foods which have high levels of calcium that people are unaware of. A lot of green vegetables, for example, so they feed them, guinea pigs happily eat them, and then they accumulate the calcium in their bladder and they lead to stones. So it's 3.64 millimetres, which is a decent sized bladder stone for a guinea pig. And if you kind of extrapolate that out to a human, you're probably looking at about golf ball size. So wow. we are going to have to perform surgery on your little Pepe, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. OK. Yeah. He's not going to be able to comfortably pass that. No, mm -hmm. and he's uncomfortable now with it as well, so... It's the only option. Yeah. 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 And worries, yeah. Because it's a big thing for a little animal like that to go through an operation. You need to say goodbye to your little guy now because I need to take him downstairs and uh, get that stone out. Mm, all right. Good luck. Good luck, little fella. Be a very anxious few hours, I'm sure. Hello, ladies. Hello. Got a little Pepe Hello. with me. Here you go, look. Hey. There's my rhyming team of Gina and Tina. Yeah. There they are. Oh, hey. your little paw. It's time for the operation to remove a bladder stone from three-year-old guinea pig Pepe. OK, here we go. Good boy. Good boy. Guinea pigs, they are quite prone to stress and they are nervous, very delicate creatures, so, of course, Everyone's a little bit nervous today. You're all right, sweetheart. We use the anaesthetic gas in a box, so Pepe goes in there and hopefully goes down nice and quickly. So if you take the lid off and then, Tina, if you lift him out for me. That's it. Oh, boy. Small mammals are generally very fragile when it comes to anaesthetics, so we have to take extra precautions and just be as fast as we can. So I'm cutting now, OK? Yep. 
So he just flinched a little bit there, so we just turn him up. Put him on four? Yep. So there's his bladder there. It's quite large. Very thick. Mm. Very angry bladder. Once I cut through the bladder, I then go on a little bit of a fishing expedition. I did used to love fishing as a kid. Take yourself off and enjoy the sights and sounds. I think it's good for a kid to learn a bit of patience, you know, as well. Oh, there he is. Yep. There you are, you naughty thing. Uh, it looks pretty tiny on my finger, but for a guinea pig, that is pretty large. So I think it's going to make this little boy much, much more comfortable. Well done. When Scott pulled the stone out, initially I thought, wow, it looks really small. But if you think about the size of the guinea pig and then the size of the stone, that bladder stone is relative to a golf ball-sized bladder stone in a dog or cat. Now I'm just popping his bladder back into his abdomen where it belongs, close him up, and back home to him and dad. Tina and Gina have done fantastically well monitoring this very delicate creature very closely to ensure he gets through it. Let's wake him up. You're now stone free, Mr. Guinea Pig. Mm. Let's have a nice smooth recovery, please. A stone lighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pepe is woken up very well. So now it's time for me to call Trish and Luca and give them the good news. Come on, then, little man. Get back to bed. I'll call mum and dad. Good boy. Hello, buddy. I think I heard them upstairs. I think your lift's here. Hey. Come on then. Later that day, guinea pig Pepe has recovered well from his anaesthetic and is ready to go home. All right, let's go. When Scott rang, I was so relieved. I had such a heavy heart all afternoon, I couldn't eat. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here to hopefully take him home. There you go. Hello, hello little boy. Hello, well mister. Mm -hmm. Say hi. Hi. Oh. Mm -hmm. Lovely day at the spa, mm. getting some massages, losing a mm. bite of stone, that sort of stuff. Aww. And all I would say is, in future, to try and prevent this from happening, mm -hmm. the, um, is to try and consider just reducing everything that has calcium in it mm. to a degree. So focus more on the hay and less on the pellets. I think that we should sure. get a, a okay. really good result here. All right, mm. we'll do. Yeah. Hey, come on then, you come to me. You've got a bag there from Luca, as always. Come here, sweetheart. Good boy. All right. See you later. See you later. Be a good boy. Back in your bag. There you go. Good lad. Thank you very no much. No worries. My pleasure. See you later. Hello, guys. A lovely, relaxing family picnic. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my boy. And How Scott are you? now has yeah. a special belated oh, birthday surprise for enough. Springer Spaniel Jack. Great to see you. How are you guys doing? Good, thank you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The elderly dog has recovered well from surgery to remove fatty lumps that were inhibiting his movement. Well, I know that I kind of ruined his birthday a little bit. So I've bought him a little birthday cake. I'm just going to show it to you, but you can't have it just yet. Yummy. Ooh. Lucky wow. boy. Now, before I give you my treat, can you give me mine? I just want to know how he's gone after the surgery. He's doing amazingly well, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. I completely changed him. When I'm taking Jack for a walk now, he can keep up with all the little puppies, and he just seems so much freer and happier. The weight off his shoulders and a weight off our minds, really, yeah. What I would quite like, is to see him move. So if yeah. it's okay, I might pop myself over there. I'm gonna offer him up his cake and then we'll see you run. I'd love to see you run and yeah. move, my boy. I did feel quite mean in not letting him have any kind of birthday cake or treat before the surgery because we need to starve him, of course, to get that done. But now is another day. He seems a lot happier, so I think he's deserved his birthday cake. All right, my boy, you ready for this? Okay. Happy birthday, buddy! Come on, let's see you move. Oh, wow, look at you go. Look at you go. 
Jack is a Springer Spaniel who loves his food. So of course he's gonna to wanna to scoff the food straight away, but the good news is he is running very smoothly, very comfortably. This is a happy, healthy boy. I don't think I've ever seen him enjoy food as much. <laughs> he's so happy. Look at that, eh? You can have your cake and eat it now, can't you? <laughs> happy birthday, mate. Maria and her mum Ruth have made a special trip to Richmond with their two very precious elderly companions. Morning, Kirsty. Hi, Morning, Kirsty. Hello. Oh dear. So we've got here. Which one's which? This is Spot. Where's Spot? And this is Popcorn. We've come all the way from Kent with my two cats. I know Scott can deal with the problem, and I know he can sort both the cats out. Hello, who are you? <laughs> oh, wow. The mother and daughter have made the trip after watching Vet on the Hill. After seeing what Scott does on TV to all these lovely animals, it's about time to hour up two cats were sorted out. Spot, um, Scott, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Spot's the cat, all right? Spot's the cat. <laughs> Is, I reckon this is probably the first time she's been out of words, is it? I'm Mom? not saying nothing. I'm not saying it well what she's been coming out with. <laughs> but sadly, this is not a social visit. Popcorn and Spot are all boys. They're 14 and 13, respectively. Maria and Ruth have been very concerned about their cats. Popcorn has a snotty nose and Spot has problems with polyps in his ears. Polyps are growths that can develop in a cat's ear and, if left untreated, can become large enough to block the ear canal and rupture the eardrum. Yes, I can see a little dark spot there. So there's a couple of them actually in that left ear, which is a sign of polyp development. So will you take the polyps out if he has got polyps? It depends on where they are and where they're attached. Once we can actually look down there effectively, we'll be able to then advise and go from there. Okay. Yeah. What we want is for him to have his twilight years in comfort. Polyps in cats can be really quite serious indeed. They can actually completely block off the ear canals, which lead to chronic and ongoing ear infections. Oh, there you go, good lad. That's a good boy. But they can also grow down and into the throat as well. So they can be really big and really quite concerning indeed. All right, so this is the fabled popcorn. Hello, buddy. How are you? It's a pretty obvious problem, isn't it, girls? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hello, champ. Come on out, you come. If I get you to pop the box on the floor fully, please, Maria. Thanks. This poor boy is really struggling with a horribly snotty nose. Not only is there discharge coming out of it that's pus, but also there's a little bit of blood. So it's really an uncomfortable situation for him. He's making a huge amount of sort of snoring noises. This is an uncomfortable boy. So yeah, you're a very thin old man, aren't you? Definitely had better days. He didn't have better days when he was born. He was born underneath a car. Was he? Yeah, his mum yeah. started to give birth and I actually climbed underneath the car yeah. and got the cat, got the mum out and she was giving birth to Popcorn. No way. And I actually helped yeah. her giving birth to all her kittens because wow. she was struggling. So he's been your boy so, right from the first second from, of his life? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please save him, Scott. Yeah. It's not his time. No. Okay. It might seem that a snotty nose isn't too much to worry about and you send an animal away with some antibiotics and all should be good. But I'm very concerned here that Maria and Ruth have tried numerous different treatments to try and fix this problem, but it keeps coming back. He has a really nasty inflammation of the nasal passages. It can be caused by foreign bodies up his nose, it can be caused by polyps, and the worst case scenario is it can be caused by cancer. No, it's not right at all. Okay. No. Isn't it champ, eh? But mummy cares about you. We don't know exactly what is wrong with popcorn. It doesn't sound good. I've just got to wait and see. As both Spot and Popcorn have serious conditions that need to be understood, I now need to take them downstairs into the practice to be able to perform some tests and understand exactly what's going on with them and what I need to do to fix them. And then once we've got some answers for you, we'll talk it through and we'll go from there. Bye bye, boys. Be See good. See you, boys, later. Just hope. It's not bad news for you. Oh, my baby. Oh, I see you. See you, my new. In Twickenham, another mother and daughter, Beta and Leilu, 
also have an appointment with Scott for their much-loved pet hedgehog. So she's Luta. She's one and a half years old. She's an African pygmy hedgehog. You can, like, really pet her, give her kisses. She's a very special one. These endearing animals can be kept as pets, and their growth in popularity means there are now around 10,000 of them in homes across the UK. She's more like a cat because she knows her name and you have to give her belly rubs and she's really um, very close to our hearts. Hello, baby. But recently this prickly princess has been struggling with ongoing bladder issues. First what I noticed that uh, she had blood in her pee. Of course, we went to the vet and she got some antibiotics, but then we noticed that she was a bit incontinent. After multiple courses of antibiotics, Luta doesn't seem to be improving. So Beta and Leilu are taking her to see Scott for further investigation. She is suffering and she is weak. It's just something that is just breaking your heart because you can see that, I don't know, she was really, I think, in pain. I'm gonna be all right, little baby. I am really worried that she needs a surgery. I mean, it scares me to death because she's just tiny. We have to find a solution because it's just not the way how she can live. Hi, Nath. Uh, hi, Sue. These two much-loved moggies are Popcorn and Spot. They're two old boys so we are going to have to tread quite carefully. Popcorn has got a problem with a snotty nose. Spot has chronically irritated ears and some small polyps growing in each of them, which is causing him a little bit of mischief. All right, so we'll just start with Spot. Scott is hoping the polyps in Spot's ear are not serious enough to need surgery. Uh, so now he's under anaesthetic. We're just going to be having a look at his ears to see what's going on. There's a lot of scabs and crusty bits. Okay. During the process of cleaning Spot's ears, I remove a small polyp. There are some more polyps there, but I certainly don't think they're a cause for major concern. And hopefully with good cleaning and a course of antibiotics, these ears should improve. Next, it's on to Popcorn, who's also now under a light sedation, so Scott can investigate why the cat has a nasty discharge coming from his nose. Okay, so we're gonna have to move quick with this guy. So we're gonna just take him next door now, we'll do the x-rays and we'll go from there. X-rays will show Scott if there are any signs of cancer in the elderly cat. X-ray. We've taken some x-rays of Popcorn's head what I can see is that his nasal passages look relatively clear and that I can't see anything solid in there. But I'm not sure if I can be confident yet that he doesn't have cancer, but I'm feeling hopeful. What we're gonna do now is just to flush his nasal passages just to get rid of all of that gunk and then look down his nose. It's quite the weapon to put down a poor little cat's nose, isn't it? Scott is now using a rhinoscope, which will give him an illuminated view deep inside Popcorn's nasal cavities. Using the rhinoscope, there isn't anything lurking there that there shouldn't be, so uh, little Popcorn doesn't have polyps. He doesn't seem to have any tumours developing down there. All right, so you can wake up. My suspicion is that Popcorn is suffering with cat flu, which is a viral condition. It's caused by two different types of virus, Khaleesi virus or herpes virus, which can then lead to recurrent bacterial infections. The great news is that neither Popcorn nor Spot need surgery, and I think that's gonna be a huge relief for Maria and Ruth. They absolutely adore animals, so I know that these two cats are in great hands. Yes, they're gonna need long-term management, but if that's done right, they can live long and happy lives. Hey, Sam. Popcorn and Spot so have a bright future. For now, they'll sleep off the oh, anaesthetic before heading home later today. Nose. OK, all right, sweetheart. OK, OK, yes. Hi, Beta. Hi, Hi Lou. Hello. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. All right, well, let's see our little lady, eh? 
Beta and Leilu have arrived to see Scott with their pet hedgehog, Luta. There you are. Always oh, just so amazed at how beautiful your girl is. Hello, beautiful. And still problems with her ability to go to the toilet yeah, to wee. She actually tried in the morning and was just in there and she couldn't do anything. How painful are we talking? She can cry and scream and... Scream? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can just see she flinches a little bit every time I touch around her bladder. You can just see how mm. little legs lift up so she is uncomfortable. Little Luta has had a persistent bladder problem, which so far hasn't responded to antibiotics. So I think what we need to do today is to do an ultrasound of her bladder, okay. just to have a better look okay. at the bladder and understand how it's functioning and if there's any problems with it. All right. So what we're going to do with you, Mrs. is I'm just going to take you downstairs. I'm going to give her a little bit of gas because that's the only way she'll let me properly look at her tummy. And once I've been able to assess that with an ultrasound, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Will you say goodbye to mummy? Goodbye. See you. <laughs> Luta very much is part of Beta and Leilu's family. So if something was to go wrong with this poor little creature, I know that they will be both devastated. Okay. All right. Come on then. Let's go, sweetie. Here we go. Please take good care of her, okay? While Leilu heads off to school, Beta will wait to hear what Scott finds on the ultrasound. So, Luta's back with us again. Mm. Is she struggling to urinate again? She is, yeah, she's straining. And okay. uh, Beta really thinks mm. that she's in pain to the point where she's actually been screaming. Oh, no. Nurse Nathan and Scott's new vet, Tina, are helping out today. So I met Luta about a month and a half ago, and I automatically fell in love with Luta after one consultation. She's something very unique and very special. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable, Luta. I am trying to help. I'm going to leave you with lovely Tina. <laughs> well, let's try and give her a little bit of gas. All right. The anesthetic we're going to perform today is an inhalation anesthetic. So it's basically placing Luta into a box that then the anesthetic agent is then funneled into. She then goes to sleep really quite quickly and then we put her onto a mask and we can maintain her on that whilst I perform the ultrasound. Okay, let's see what we can see, shall we? Do you see that, guys? I mean, that is literally filling the whole bladder which is why she's straining so much. She must be very uncomfortable. This image shows very clearly that we have a pretty serious problem on our hands. Hi there, Beta. Uh, Thanks for waiting. <laughs> Come on down, I've got something to show you. Here's your little lady. Scott has just performed an ultrasound on pet hedgehog looter and owner Beta okay. is about to find out the results. All right, so when I put the probe onto her bladder, here's her bladder here, all right? That should be a black bag, okay, full of fluid. Instead, she's got something gray sitting in there. Can you see that? And that shouldn't be there. The only way for me to try and make her more comfortable and to make it better is by actually going in and performing surgery. Right. But you can make it. I mean, she's very small. She is very small. So I need to use some very small instruments. Nathan's here watching the anaesthetic. OK, we're watching like a hawk. We know how much you love her, All right? So we're going to make sure we do what we need to today. But when I see something like that in a bladder, I need to get that out straight away because it could be Hopefully something like a bit of protein, it could be some sort of mineral accumulation, but of course you need to be prepared for the possibility it could be cancer, right? No, it's not. No. I, hope, I hope not as well, I hope not as well, okay. All right, so can you just say a quick little goodbye to her, okay, because we're going to have to take a straight into surgery. I will call you, yeah. All right. All right, we'll look after your girl. Peter, she adores Luta. 
and we're really hopeful that it isn't a mass inside the bladder because that can be quite serious and if it is I will be heartbroken um, along with Beta but we will we will get through this together no matter the outcome. Because the looter is so tiny, I'm going to have to use some tiny instruments. So what I'm going to do is to open up our eye kit, which is the ophthalmology kit. It has some tiny little instruments in there and also I have a little tiny vet in the form of Tina. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to make the first cut. Oh, look at the size of it. Is that the bladder? Yep. Bizarre. Really bizarre. Uh, what we're discovering here is some kind of mass developing. It's very large. It's compressing Luther's bladder and it's directly attached to it. So it certainly is the absolute reason why Luther has been struggling to urinate. Do you think we can still open that? We're going to have to. Mm. It's the only way we're going to make this any better. What the hell is that? Is that the uterus? What I've just popped out is pretty horrifying. This is some sort of ugly alien that is living inside what looks like the uterus just attached to the bladder. So what it's actually been doing is growing and making Luther's bladder smaller and smaller. This is absolutely huge. I mean, for a hedgehog, this would be like having a bowling ball growing in your abdomen. So taking this out will give this animal immediate relief. Oof. Horrible. Yeah. Scott will send the lump to pathology for testing, and it will be an anxious wait before he learns the results. Let's just hope and pray, hey, because uh, Beta is so emotionally involved with this creature. Yeah. If this turns out to be something nasty, she's going to be devastated. So let's wake her up. Okay. On recovery from anaesthetic, animals just don't really know where they are, what they're doing. But obviously surgery can be painful as well. And even though we manage it with pain relief, Luta is showing signs of discomfort. Bless her. Good girl. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Good girl. Come on, baby. Hey. Luta will have to be closely hedge, monitored overnight cozy. to make okay. sure she fully recovers from the operation. Okay, have a snuggle. That's it. Maria so and Ruth are back to, to hear Scott's actually, report on their poorly followers. cats, Absolutely Spot fantastic. and Popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. So, Popcorn, yeah. we've been able to rule out polyps, we've been able to rule out foreign bodies, and we've been able to rule out cancer. Fantastic. Oh, brilliant. That's good news. news. Oh, that is brilliant. good news. Oh. He does, however, have what I believe to be cat flu. So, good news as far as we've been able to rule out the really horrible things, but the bad news is that this is an ongoing, consistent problem, but rather than thinking that you're ever going to find a cure, it's that mental shift to go, you know what, what I need to do is to manage the conditions, yeah. all right? And that's with uh, consistent use of antibiotics. Oh, I can't wait to get him on. I cannot wait, bless his heart. Now, Spot, I actually feel that his ear canals are perfectly fine as they are. Yes, there are polyps there. I removed one on the left-hand side, which has increased the canal a little bit more. But for me, he's a 13-year-old cat, and do we want to put him through a major operation with a lot of really nasty complications? Or is it best to try consistent and ongoing management, which would be just a, an ear clean on a twice-weekly basis, which he probably won't like very much, but I think he's going to like it far more than major surgery. Right. Yep, yeah. definitely. I'm so grateful for what you've done for these cats. Especially poor little Popcorn. So, it's a big thank you. It's more than a big thank you, Scott. It's more than a thank you. Hopefully you're going to have him yeah. for a lot longer yet. And thank, thank you, Scott. Thank you. Bye, boys. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. See you in a minute. Thank you, Scott. Right, thank you, Scott. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. Bye, girls. Thank you, Scott. Bye. Thank All you. right, see ya. See ya. <laughs> Go on then. 
At the end of a busy day, Scott's arrived home with a very special little passenger. Hi, guys! Hi. Luta has had a really big day today and she's going to be painful after the procedure. And rather than send her home to the very worried beta, I thought instead I'm going to take her back to my place. She's going to get all the love and attention she could possibly desire, lots of cuddles and the medication she needs. There she is. What do you think? She's adorable. Nice and gentle, that's it. So Luta, the fact that she's gone through surgery, they understand what daddy's job is. It's being a vet, it's looking after animals and sometimes performing things on them that they don't like. She is, she's got a lovely fluffy soft tummy. Daddy had to take a little lump out of it today. That's literally gross. <laughs> a lot of daddy's job is literally gross. No, but I'm gonna be sick. She Let seems much happier. I think Luta's is going to get a lot of attention, perhaps a little more than she'd like. So we will have to uh, make sure we, as always, curb the crazy, keep things nice and calm for her because she has, after all, had surgery today. But I think she's going to get a lot of love. And better to be here, I think, than in the vet practice tonight. Closest thing to her real home. Good girl. Well done, Luta. Good girl. Oh, there we go. <laughs> when she's feeling better, then she can go home to her mummy. OK. Yeah? I'm going to miss her. I've only known her five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Time to eat for us, sweetie. Okay, go on. What's happened, hey? Oh, you lovely boy. Next day. Scott's nurse Jess good. has his latest patient Not waiting. Yourself. Hey Jess, what have we got? Hi oh, Scott, we've got a really poorly puppy here. A poorly puppy. He's been vomiting a lot um, okay. and diarrhea. Oh dear, and do we think that he's eaten something silly or...? Well, apparently he's quite the scavenger. Is he? So that is a possibility. Okay, I don't know how you even reach a bin. Look how short <laughs> you are. Hey, <laughs> so what's his name? His name's Colin. Colin! <laughs> oh, Colin, that's a fantastic name. All right, mate, well, let's have a little look at you. So he still seems pretty bright, which is good, doesn't mm. it? Puppies use their mouth to explore their environment and they chew a lot and very often they swallow things. So to have a sore tummy out of the blue means very likely he's chewed something and swallowed it when he shouldn't have. All right, let's so bring you around cool, here. Have a cuddle with Auntie Jess and have a little feel back here. Yeah, and he's definitely tense in his abdomen. Mm. Really sore. You don't like that, do you, mate? You don't like that. No, you don't. Because we don't know what Colin's potentially swallowed, this is an emergency situation. We don't know if he has swallowed something toxic or something sharp, but either way, we need to understand exactly what it is and work out how best to treat it. I'll do a little x-ray and have a little look what's inside your tummy. What have you swallowed, hey? Hey, what have you swallowed? Upstairs, Colin's owner, Susie, is anxious about her baby boy. Colin is her very first puppy, and she's had him for just six months. I've always wanted a miniature Dachshund puppy, and my husband bought Colin for me, and he was the best Christmas present I've ever had. Uh, and he was born on our wedding anniversary, so that seemed to make him extra special. Well, I'm very, very nervous about the whole thing, but I think he's in good hands, so we hope for the best. X-rays. Oh, boy, well done. That's not too bad, was it? You were so good. You were so good. Such a good boy. Poor boy. Hi there, Susie. Do you want to come down and see your boy? A few things to talk about. Looking at these x-rays, it's very clear what the problem is. There is a dense piece of material in his stomach. It's about the density of his vertebrae, so very clearly it's likely to be bone, but it's present in his stomach and hasn't moved. So he is a dog that tends to eat things he shouldn't, is that right? Well, he's so low down on the ground that unfortunately he hoovers everything up, so... Yes, without you being able to say Absolutely. anything otherwise. Yeah. yeah, that's completely fair enough. So you can see the problem here is that this is bone. Mm. It could have got down the stomach. The stomach's like a sink. But the concern is, is can it get further down? Because if it does, his intestine is about that wide. So what I'm worried about is that that will then lodge. And if it lodges, that's a major concern because then he can get perforations of the intestine, he can get peritonitis. Things go from bad to worse very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. 
The second thing is if I try and make him vomit that, it can cause major injury because it'll come up with force. Right. So we can't have it come up, we can't allow it to go down, mm. we're in a bit of a pickle. Mm. And we've given him some medication to try and make him a bit happier, but he isn't going to be happy really. Until it's removed. Exactly. It's very obvious the close relationship between Susanna and Colin, and he is just a baby. He's her baby and she loves him dearly. And the last thing she wants to do is to put him through surgery, but she knows he's in danger and I do need to do it. All right, Susie, all the best. Well, See you later. Bye. Bye. I just feel absolutely dry mouthed and sweaty palmed. And I'm just really sorry he's got to go through all this. I really wish he didn't. Oh, poor oh, baby. Oh, don't cry. Mm -hmm. Don't cry. Let's see mummy again soon. You should move. All right, little man. <laughs> uh, it's a moment of truth. Yes, yes. OK, you're going to forgive me? Mm? In Richmond, Scott is preparing pint-sized patient Colin for surgery. Good boy. The miniature dachshund has what looks like a dangerous fragment from a cooked bone lodged in his abdomen. It's in so deep, surgery is the only way to get it out safely. Colin's a very little dog, and as a result, all of his structures are a little bit smaller, so sometimes that can present a challenge, but I think more just the fact that he's just a baby, it's quite heartbreaking. He's just a little puppy. He doesn't deserve to go through this so early on in his life, but it has to be done. Good boy. Come on then. Good lad. angry. It's, uh, it's red and inflamed, so something's upsetting it. James, mate, do you mind just putting on a pair of gloves and just, I uh, just wouldn't mind a couple of stay stitches just to go fishing. Before starting to retrieve the bone, Scott needs an extra pair of hands and calls in vet James to help with the delicate surgery. I've placed two stay stitches, they're kind of like shopping bag handles. And what I'll do is pass them to James, who will hold them up for me. And it just means that once I cut through into the stomach, the contents in there won't leak out. Okay. So, I'm just about to go into the stomach now, Jess, all right? If I can find that, then I've done my job. Just a little bit at the moment. Opening up Colin's stomach and looking inside, Unfortunately, it's not that eureka moment where you find the nugget of gold. Instead, there were small pieces of bone which had accumulated together to look like a large piece that was present on the x-ray. Swallowing bone, you think, is quite a natural behaviour, but when it's cooked, it becomes far more brittle, it's harder to absorb, and as a result, it's like trying to pass little pieces of razor blade, so very, very painful. But I can't find anything too big in here, so... That's good. With all the bone fragments removed, the surgery is almost over. Nice one, James. Thanks for that. No problem. Cheers. OK, so Jess, we're just going to do a good flush and a clean and then close our boy up. Thankfully, now it's all out, the stomach can settle down and Colin should make a full recovery. Hi. Hi. <laughs> There's Mummy. Oh, wow. Let me give him to you. Oh, goodness me. He's just been such a lovely patient. Yeah, I think we've all fallen in love with him, to be oh, honest. I know, I don't deserve him. He really is a special little boy. Well, we can take him, is it? No. OK. I will fight you for him, but anyway. <laughs> but thank you so much. Really no great. worries. So he will take a while to come right. He just needs a little bit more love and attention, so he's going to stay here. Yeah. And then he can go home and he's comfortable tomorrow. OK. I can't believe how well he looks. He's very sleepy, obviously, but he's just looking so good. Oh, I'm so relieved. <laughs> All right, well, I have to take him back now. Yeah. And um, we will see you tomorrow once you're feeling a bit brighter. Hey. Yeah, you take care. Yeah. Say bye, Mummy. Bye-bye. All right. All right, Susie, take Thanks care. So much. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye. Mm, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yes, he is. <laughs> At one of Scott's other clinics, 
Penelope has arrived with her pet parrot, Coco. Coco is amazing. I've had her for two years. She's like one of the family, really. We couldn't live without her, I don't think. You can never get bored. I mean, if you're home alone, she's always someone to talk to, you know? She'll repeat what you're saying. She'll whistle to you. She's good company. Good morning, baby. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, and you? This is Coco. Hi, Coco. How are you doing? So my claws are too sharp. Oh, yes. OK. Do you want to bring us through? We can just sure. have a quick check over. Excellent. Her claws are really long when she sits on my finger and on my shoulder. When they're too long, it starts digging into the skin and becomes really painful. And I think it's not good for her either. And how old is she? She's two. And she's happy and healthy at home? Yep, everything's good. It's just these claws. Ow! Oh, yes. <laughs> do you want to try and pop her on the table? Let's see if we can do that. And then there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is get her a little bit settled and then just check her heart and respiration. Basically make sure that she's healthy enough for us to handle her in order to clip her nails. Oh, look how long those are. Hey? Yeah, they're digging into me. I'm going to have scars from All there. All right, well, we'll get those sorted for her today. Let's just have a quick listen at your heart. Oh, I give you those little feet. You keep chewing. Which actually she doesn't bite my ear. <laughs> In order to check her heart, I can use a stethoscope, but I just find my ear can hear a lot better. Okay, so her heart and chest sounds fine. Oh, there we go. So I'm more than happy to do her nail clip today. Oh, excellent. Ow! Oh, oh, yeah, she's agitated she's now. now. Oh, well, you didn't want to come to me. There we go, good girl. Tina will take grumpy Coco downstairs for the procedure. I'll look after her. Hi, Coco. Hi. Peter. Yes, sweetie. There you go. What's that? Yeah, you're feeling better. Luta's night of TLC with the Miller family has given the little hedgehog an appetite, and now she's ready to go home. Mummy will be here soon, won't she? I'm going to go back in there, wait for her. Ladies, look who I've got. Beta and Layla have just arrived to collect their oh precious God, pets. I'm so cold, baby. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be sorry because I think by being very brave, we've got a very good result and that she's recovered beautifully. Uh, but the tumour is about that big. So what was happening is that tumour was pressurising the bladder so she just didn't have anywhere for her weed to go. And I think by removing it, she's going to be much more comfortable, all right? But now, I know you guys are worried because we do have this yeah. agonising wait, yeah. all right, until the pathologist gets back to me and tells me what that tumour is and then we'll work out what we have to go mm. from yeah, there. OK. If this lump comes back as non-cancerous, as benign, Luta should have a normal quality of life almost immediately and have a normal lifespan. But if it comes back as something nasty, the answer is altogether different. Oh, she's so pretty. So <laughs> Show your teeth. She does love you. It's incredible. See you. See you. Good to It's a huge relief that that pain is not there anymore, and hopefully that will go away completely. But we're still worried about the results on Thursday. Yeah, that's okay. fine. You give lots of love. I know that you will. And I'll speak to you in a few days. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Scott. All right, See then. You my later. pleasure. See you later, girls. Take bye care. Bye. bye. All the best. Bye. Thank bye, bye Luta. <laughs> bye. See ya. Hello, Coco. Hello. She's in for a little bit of a nail clip today. At Scott's Isleworth Clinic. Vet Tina and Nurse Alicia are preparing to give Coco a much-needed nail trim. So birds become stressed quite quickly and they can die quite suddenly. So procedure-wise, we just try to keep it short and sweet. OK, she's quite happy over there. I'm going to start with your manicure or pedicure. So why do you file them, sort of cut them? So by filing them, I actually build up a little bit of heat in that nail 
is when you trip them, you can clip them too short and they can bleed. Okay. So when I'm filing, if it get, if I do get a little bit of blood, it cauterizes mm -hmm. it at the same time. Okay. And it's not painful for her. Perfect. Let's do the next foot. Coco's been an absolute star. She didn't scream, she didn't complain. And that's your pedicure complete, mm -hmm. miss. All right, thanks, Liz. Here we go. And she tolerated the handling very well. She was a very good patient today. All right, hi, Mom. Oh. Right. Hello, Coco. Yes, she is. She did Hello. so well. Hi. Let's see. Oh, that's so much better. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Isn't it? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Having her clothes filed down is good for both of us because now she can spend more time on my shoulder and on my fingers. Bye, Coco. Will you give me a whistle, Annie? Coco seems quite happy after the procedure. She even gave me a little whistle afterwards to let me know that everything went all right and she's going to be okay. Hi, Vita, come on through. You've got your girl. Yeah. There you go. Pop her down and grab a seat. It's a new day. A and a very nervous beta is back to see Scott to find out Luther's pathology results. So, as you know, we had to remove that large lump uh, we found in her uterus. We were hopeful it was going to be something benign. But in fact, um, we've spoken with the pathologist and what we've found is something called a leomyosarcoma, which unfortunately is not good news. And this particular tumour is incredibly malignant. What does it mean? Because of how vicious this particular tumour is, what we need to do is perform a hysterectomy like in a female who has uterine cancer. Okay, so what it means, if you do that, then she can live a longer life. That's the hope, yes. The surgery we need to perform on Lutra is called Novaria hysterectomy, and that's removing the uterus and the ovaries together. Now remove any remnants of this tumour, and hopefully Lutra will live a full, natural life. You just need to have this one last bit of faith in mm -hmm. me, and I will take it downstairs and we'll do it straight away. The sooner we can do it, the better chance she has that I'll be able to completely cure her. That's the best, I mean, you say completely cure her, so that's the only reason why I think we have to do that to her, that after that she can be fine. <laughs> Vita is understandably devastated at the news. The last thing she wants is for her girl to go through discomfort and a surgery again. Say bye to Mama. <laughs> no. It is very sad, but it's the right thing to do. All right, speak to you later. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Right, here we go again. Okay, so Nathan, I'm cutting now, okay? Okay. Scott is starting the delicate hysterectomy surgery on little hedgehog Luta. I'm doing all your handiwork there. No. <laughs> the 18-month-old has been diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer. Scott is removing her uterus and ovaries in a bid to stop it spreading. OK, well, I think what we do is let's start with the ovaries on each side. This is the second round of surgery for little Luta, after Scott recently removed a suspicious lump from her bladder. Once we're able to locate the ovaries at the end of the uterine horns, we then tie them off. And now what we're left with is then the uterine body, the womb. Now what we need to do is to choose a position that doesn't affect the urinary system, but at the same time we need to take enough to ensure that we're removing every single cell that might be left from that nasty tumour. Okay team, there we go. Hopefully, that's the last time little Luta will have to go under the knife. So that was a very successful outing. We've managed to get what we wanted without causing any other damage. And hopefully, I can send her home with a clear bill of health. And guys, that is that. All right, let's 
Let's wake this girl up, shall we? Okay. Oh, baby, not the crying again. Oh, baby. Oh, honey. Do you think it's a surgery or this thing, Scott? <laughs> I know, waking up to this. <laughs> Poor thing. Yeah. As Luta starts to come round from the anaesthetic, mm -hmm. everyone is relieved. Oh, it's, so sweet. it's good news. We're smiling at the end of the surgery today, and hopefully this is the last time. I'm very happy. <laughs> Hello, lady. Hi. Hi, Scott. Hi, here's your baby. Lutta, we've heard you've been a very brave girl, my little one. She has been a very brave girl, you're right. She's been so good to have two surgeries in just a short space of time. But this surgery I feel very good about. Lutta. Just to be 100% sure that we have removed absolutely every cancer cell that we possibly could, we are going to be sending off the reproductive tract to our pathologists to have a good check under a microscope to make sure that we can give Luta the all clear. So it means that she will have a hopefully long and happy hedgy life with us. I hope so. I hope so. And I hear you're throwing a party for us soon, is that right? Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think so. We have to throw a party, no? I was really worried yesterday about her and what will happen, but now I'm really, really happy. And, um, and she looks really great. Now that the surgeries are over, she's going to be happy hedgehog and we're going to celebrate. All right then, little lady. Next time I'll so, see you, it'll be party time, <laughs> eh? And yeah. hopefully we'll be and so delivering some good news. Hello, buddy. Good morning, how are you? You got your voice back, you want to see mummy? You want to see mummy? Mummy, where's that mummy? Where's that mummy? Hmm? Hey? Miniature Dachshund puppy Corn back. is Do also I? fully no. recovered from the surgery no. to remove yeah. dangerous okay. bone fragments from his stomach. Yeah. Come on then. Yeah, come on. Let's go find that mummy. Come on, sweet boy. Come on. It's really great with Colin that we have understood what the problem was, we've isolated it and then removed it quickly. So we've given this little dog a lot of comfort and now we can send him home happy and healthy to his lovely mum. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Look at that tail go. Oh, I love my mummy. Well, as you can see, he's doing a lot better. He's much brighter. He's done so, so well, and he's been such a brave little patient, and we've all fallen quite in love with him. So you're actually quite lucky that you're getting him back. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. It's just great having him back now. I'm so relieved and so happy, I can't tell you. We're going to be so careful now with him. I can't believe that he ate all that rubbish. And uh, we're going to have to watch him like a hawk, but it's just a big weight off my mind. Hey, but now it's time to go home. You're such a good boy. Yes, you're such a good boy. Ah, oh, my goodness. Colin's a puppy, and puppies like to try different things, particularly on the dietary front. I'd love to think that he's learned from his mistakes, but he probably hasn't. Oh, bless you. Okay. All right, see you Take later, care. Susie. Cheers. Bye-bye. Take care. See you care. later. Bye, guys. Bye. So cute. So, hedgehog party, hey? Yeah. How many of them have you been to in your life? None. Mm, same. <laughs> It's the day of Little Hedgehog Luta's party. <laughs> oh, it's my so favourite cute. Photo. <laughs> Scott and Tina have arrived, and there's good news. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Peter. How are you? Hi. The pathology reports come back, and by removing the uterus, we've removed every single cancer cell that's present. So that means that Luta is given a clean bill of health. She's free of cancer. Long may she live. Ah, there she is. Hello, Luta. Hello. How is she doing after the surgery? She is just amazing. I think she's really fine. Well, I love all this food. It's amazing. <laughs> Look at this food. It's really Look yum. Look at this. Okay. Yummy. Oh, that looks nice. Tina, do you want to have a little nibble of that? Oh. I wouldn't, oh. actually. <laughs> There's mealworms in there. <laughs> mealworms. It's a hedgehog party. What did you expect? Look, Luta, what do you think? Will she let us have a look at her tummy and just have a look at the scar? Good girl. Wow, she's looking brilliant. She really is looking brilliant. 
After major surgery, well, two of them in fact, Luta's looking none the worse. She's actually looking really well. She seems very healthy and very happy. <laughs> we need to celebrate her recovery, and now it's time to eat some food in the shape of hedgehogs. <laughs> well, is the best. Oh, I just pricked myself on a fake hedgehog. Mm. Occupational hazard. <laughs> Well, it's so great to see her looking so well. So I think we can say a big cheers to Luta's health. Cheers. Yes. Cheers, sweetheart. Yeah, good girl. At Scott's Richmond practice, Sammy is bringing in his 14-week-old kitten after he was involved in a nasty accident. Hello. Is this Kintosh? Yes, it is. Oh, he's had a bit of a nasty fall, hasn't he? Yes, he has. So I thought I'd bring him in straight away. Get Scott okay. to have a look at it. Yeah. Poor thing. He actually climbed up her door. He usually just pounces down onto the sofa. So what he's done instead is he's jumped the other side where it's wooden flooring and he's managed to have a really awkward fall and he's managed to hurt his hind leg, which is really sad. Hey, Sammy, you all right, mate? Hi, Scott, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good, yeah. what's happened? Oh, my cat's had a really awkward fall. How far? Um, has... It's fallen from about 10, 11 feet. Right. From a door. Wow, that's a, a huge fall. Yeah. Hello, yeah. sweetheart. Hello. What's his yeah. name? Hello. His name's Kintosh. Kintosh. That's a hell of a fall for a little man, isn't it? Yeah, he's not walking very well on that leg, is he? It's just hanging. Let's have a little feel, sweetie. Oh, sweetie. Oh, yeah. Bite the vet. Bite the vet. That's fair. Holding little Kintosh, I can see that there's something wrong with his left leg. He's not putting it down properly. And when I extend it, he's very sore. Yeah, Sammy, look, I can feel some real grinding nuts and bolts type feeling in this hip here. So unfortunately, I don't think he's got away with this fall oh. scot-free. So I think what's best is that I take him straight downstairs. Yes, please. If you give can. him a quick x-ray and we can talk more. That would right. be perfect. All right. Thank I'll you so much, I'll take him. Scott. You grab a seat. Thank All right. you. Thank you so much long. for your help. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go. I'm extremely worried about him. I just hope he's going to be all right. He's just a kitten. He's still a, he's still a baby boy. Hey, Gina. Hello. Look at this little kitty. Well, yeah, this is Kintosh, who's decided to jump off an 11-foot door. Why have hey? you gone and done that? What are you doing? Assisting Scott today is vet nurse Gina. This left leg is a problem, so just... You don't oh. like that, do you? See, that one goes mm -hmm. down in that one. Yeah. Okay. There's something going on in this hip area. So we're going to have to give him a little sedation and just see what's going on. Okay. And hopefully it's nothing too serious. Hey, hopefully it's nothing too serious. <laughs> hey. Kittens obviously are very energetic, bouncy little creatures, which is lovely when you're playing with them, but when you need to do something mean, like give them an injection, not so nice. Sorry. Oh, we're sorry, we're sorry. Oh, baby, all right, all right. So we'll have to keep him a little bit still in order for us to be able to take an X-ray to have a look at his hip and see what needs to be done. X-ray. doesn't sound like very positive noises you're making. <laughs> no, no, for very good reason. Look. Oh, that's not good. Poor baby. Hey. Yeah. You good? Are you lovely? Oh yeah, you're a good girl. No, a good dog. In Chiswick, Lisa is bracing herself for a trip to see Scott with her German Shepherd, Poppy. Can I see Scott now? Come on, then. Let's go. Let's Poppy go. is just one year old, but Lisa is worried about something oh, strange with the young dog's back legs. Off to the vet, Pops. When we take her out, she bunny hops because it's like her legs don't go together. Come on, he's a good dog. Her legs go stiff, Come on, then. especially when she's resting like, after she's been running. Yeah, she struggles with her legs. Yeah, I know. You knew you'd be over there, didn't you, with Lisa will be devastated if Poppy's problem is serious. The loving dog has brought some much-needed cheer back into her life. 
I cared for my mum for four years. In that time, my other dog passed away. So we was out a dog for a year. Then my mum passed away. I had so much time on my hands. I missed having a dog in the house. Yeah, she's made us busy, <laughs> kept us happy. Yeah, she's lovely. I know, I know, you're good. Lisa is hoping Scott will be able to help the young dog and give her the quality of life she deserves. To watch her run in like she was when she was a puppy, be great. Really, really great. Come then, Pops, we're going to see Scott. So, Sammy, here's your boy. Right. Oh, Kintosh. Hello, boy. At his Richmond clinic, Scott has just x-rayed tiny kitten Kintosh after his nasty fall. They made you better, yeah? They're going to make you better, yeah? And now he has to tell worried owner Sammy the results. On this left-hand side, there is a fracture. There's a I break. I can see that. You've got a ball, mm -hmm. you've got a neck, and then you've got the femur, so yep. the thigh bone. The thigh. And they sit into the socket, and that's the ball and socket joint, which is the hip. So the ball mm -hmm. has come off from oh. the neck. So when he's fallen, literally that's just snapped off. Oh, poor Kintosh. If you did nothing with Kintosh, eventually this leg will be completely non-functional because the head and the neck would still be grinding and rubbing against each other, causing pain. Kintosh would continuously lift the leg up, the leg would start becoming wasted, the muscles would tighten up, and eventually it would just be a withered leg hanging on the side of this poor cat's body. So what we need to do, unfortunately, is do what's called a salvage procedure, so a procedure which will allow him to continue to function, but he's not going to be perfect. What we'll do is actually go in and remove the ball, the femoral head, and a little bit of the neck as well. So he'll have a free floating hip joint. Okay. Now in a cat, all the muscles will take on the strength of the joint. And in time, he might have a slightly shorter leg, but you should never see it as an issue. There won't be no limping or no lameness. Or... There shouldn't be, no. He should be able to jump and run and do all the normal things normal that a kitten cat. should. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But unfortunately, he does need to go through major surgery. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, my baby boy would be better. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you for all your help, Scott. No worries. You want to say goodbye to your little chap? Bye, Kintosh. Bye. I didn't actually think it was that bad. To be honest, I thought it was a bruise or maybe a torn ligament. Fracture was completely out of the picture. It's really alarming. I just hope Scott can do a really good job and, you know, fix my baby boy up. Bye, Kintosh. See you soon. All right, then. Right, See you Thanks, soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. I'm extremely worried about him. It's, it's going to be a devastating blow to me and my family if, 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 if something was to ever happen to Kintosh. OK, let's knock this boy out then, shall we? Hello, sweetheart. It's proper sleepy times now. Scott is about to start surgery on little kitten Kintosh. The 14-week-old kitten snapped his femoral head or the top of his thigh bone after falling from a high door. Poor little Kintosh's hip joint is no longer effective and I can't even fix it and place a pin or some screws or even a plate. It's far too short. So what I need to do is to actually perform a femoral head and neck ostectomy. That's basically going into the joint removing the head, the ball of the ball and socket joint, remove any bony attachments to the hip altogether so that he'll now have a free floating joint. Okay, happy? Happy. Right, here we go. So I'm cutting now, okay? Yeah. What I need to do with Kintosh is a major operation. Orthopedic procedures always come with risks and to go fishing into the hip joint of a very young animal, there's the anaesthetic I've got to worry about and one false move and things can go very wrong. How's that patient doing, all okay? Patient's good, we've got a nice strong heart. That there looks just, oh dear. It doesn't look good, does it? No. I was hoping it was gonna be much easier uh, being that it's a little animal that's not particularly well muscled, but actually it's just so tiny. And you can see that's the fracture there, that's where it's broken away. It just requires a little bit of patience to get it out without causing any other damage. Let's 
shame. In this case, it's better out than in. It's perfectly formed. It has just the fracture through it at the femoral neck, which is a real shame, but of course it has to come out. So what I need to do is now just take a little bit off of this neck. The final part of the procedure is to file down some of the femoral neck, basically to stop there being any bony contact between the thigh bone and the pelvis. And by doing so, give Kintosh a pain-free life. All right, Gina, so I'm just about to close up now. How's our boy doing? He's respirate, heart rate, all normal. So surgery's all done and I'm pretty happy with the results. We've got the broken ball out of that socket and closed it up. So hopefully this little boy will work out a way to walk on a joint that doesn't exist anymore and he can use that leg and hopefully be comfortable. Oh, my little man. Kintosh will sleep okay. off the anaesthetic before heading yeah, home tomorrow. Know, sweetheart. Good boy. Yeah, fair enough. It's all right, you just rest. Lisa has now arrived at Scott's practice with her German Shepherd Cross it. Poppy. Oh, you loved it, you? I was anxious coming here, a bit worried about what was going to happen to her. I can't wait to get her sorted. Hello, Poppy. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, I'm hi. Hello, gorgeous girl. How are you doing? With her legs a bit stiff. Mm. I've noticed they're getting worse, yeah. Oh, sweetheart. Hello. Well, can I have a little look and see you walking, Hey, Can you show me what's happening? Hey, good girl. Hey. All right, well, Lisa, if you want to just take her for a walk up okay. to the top of the clinic and back, and just have a look Come at her walking. Okay. That's it, good dog. Come on. Come on. Watching Poppy walk now in the clinic, I can see she's walking up on the left leg, definitely shows signs of discomfort. She's not fully extending the leg when she's walking. She seems to almost be lifting a leg up a little bit. So there's clearly a problem with this dog and my guess is it's her hips. Good girl, that's it, all right. Well, definitely a few issues, haven't you? Definitely a few issues. That is not a normal year old dog walk, is it? No. No, she's walking a little bit like a grandma. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go into the console room and chat about your legs, shall we? Come on then. Here we go. Good girl, Poppy. What we'll do, Lisa, is I'm just going to get it to you to walk her out from the wall, and then if you grab hold of her shoulders, and then what we're going to try and do is just have a feel of those legs. All right. Okay. You can stick a muzzle on them. Um, do you think that we should straight I away? Think, I think you should. I just. Yeah. I don't know if she would, but just in case. I would probably bite someone if they pulled at my sore leg as well. So allowing me to put a muzzle on Poppy just means that Lisa's allowed me to protect myself while I'm trying to look after Poppy. Oh, oh I know. Oh, I pop. I know. Okay. Yeah. Gosh, straight away. Hey, and I haven't even done anything. Gosh, it's, it just shows how painful she is. Yeah. You, know, you can't be a Jekyll and Hyde like that without a very good reason. I'd love to do more examination with Poppy, but as soon as I even try to extend one of the legs, she gets very upset and stressed. I think what we're gonna have to do today, Lisa, is to give her a general anaesthetic, take all that pain away, then I can have a good examination yeah. and an x-ray. What yeah, do you think? Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds, yeah, better. All right then, Lisa. I'll give you a call when she's working up. Okay, then, brilliant. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> It's all right, sweetheart. Toby, go get it. Go get it. In Cambridgeshire, sprightly three-year-old Toby doesn't look like he needs a visit to the vet, but Toby's developed a disturbing habit. Toby. Well, Toby is our little puppy. He's not a puppy. He's, he'll be three in July, and he does have his problems. Yeah, good man. He'll come outside, he'll have a wee, and then he'll go inside and then he'll start licking. And then he'll lick and lick and lick his private bits. 
I would have thought that once he was neutered, that would taken care that of. That would taken taken care of the problem, but this has been an ongoing thing, and I kept thinking maybe he'll stop this, he'll outgrow this, but he's not. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? We tried the collar; it's very restrictive for him. Yeah. I've got the little onesie type thing, and that stops him. But as soon as you take that off, he's right back at it. <laughs> Somebody's gonna have to sort you out. While putting on a brave care. face, expat American yeah. Pamela and her yeah, husband Kevin are worried about why Once Toby is excessively yeah. licking yeah. his penis. Once it comes out and it gets stuck, then there is signs of discomfort that he's getting because it is it is stuck. So um, from that side of things, it's it it. The problem needs sorting. Are you ready to go? It's going to be a long trip. Pamela and Kevin have contacted Scott, hoping he can help. I emailed Scott. It was quite an explicit description because I thought he would need more details. Hopefully Scott can... Can sort him out. Sort him out. Funny noise. <laughs> I know, okay. I know, I know, sweetie. Okay. I know. It's oh, right. see? In Richmond, Scott and Nurse Jess are doing their best to settle nervous German Shepherd Poppy so Scott can examine the one year old dog's painful hips. Good girl. All right, so sleepy time now, okay? Take away all that pain if it's just for a little while. As soon as the anaesthetic takes effect, Scott will be able to get a closer look at Poppy's hips. One, two, three, up, good girl. To try to work out what's wrong. Good girl. So I'm just now starting to properly examine Poppy's leg. Now she is deprived of her senses under anaesthetic and uh, I can see straight away and feel straight away that the musculature around the back legs is actually really wasted. She should have really big stocky thighs but she doesn't, and that's not normal, and it just shows that she probably is not putting all the weight on the back legs that she should. Oh, wow. It's all right. You can see that even under anaesthetic, this dog is flinching. So we're just gonna turn her up a little bit more. All right, Jess, ready? One, two, three. That's it. Very nice. Gosh. Oh my goodness. Jess, look at that. Like, that's it. Like, it should be able to come out to here and... Poor thing. Oh, oh God. Poppy. Jeez. Just can't imagine how uncomfortable that would be. I can probably extend it maybe halfway, but you should be able to point it right back. And this dog has really poor flexibility. And when you think that this should be a teenager, they should be incredibly flexible, this dog has got some serious issues. You certainly don't see this very often in young dogs. It's devastating, really. You know, they've just started their lives. They should be happy and healthy and full of beans. She's just full of pain. God knows what I'm going to see on X-ray. OK, baby. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, good God. Good God. OK. X-ray. This is really bad. Looking at the x-rays, I feel for Poppy and equally for Lisa because the changes there are significant. And the fact they've happened in just 12 months is shocking. Okay, Lisa, you're gonna have to be brave to see these x-rays. In Richmond, Worried owner Lisa is finding out what's wrong with her beloved Poppy's hips. Looking at these, it's very clear that Poppy has what's called hip dysplasia and a very severe case of it. It's really sad to see this kind of condition in a dog as young as she is. This left hip, it is popped out of the hip joint. And that's why that left leg, I couldn't even extend it. Her leg, I could probably only extend maybe sort of 50, 60%. I couldn't get it right back because it's popped out. It is dislocated. Wow. So that's that oh, side. 
And unfortunately, the right side's not much better. Sadly, German Shepherds are a little prone to this disease. It is genetically inherited, and she has absolutely inherited some awful hips. Oh. Poppy's hips are bad. There's no question about that. And at some stage down the line, surgery may be unavoidable. But I first want to try a non-invasive approach. Given the level of Poppy's muscle wastage on those back legs, I think if we can try to build them up with things like physio and hydrotherapy, I think there's a good chance that she'll be able to better support her hips and hopefully reduce her discomfort. Now, it may work, it may not. But in Poppy's case, if we can avoid surgery, I think it's worth a try. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that. All right, well, do you want to come in and see her wake oh, yes, up? Oh, please. Yes. Give her some love and yeah. hugs. I know that's what she needs. Yeah. Yeah, come on then, follow me. I knew that it was going to be bad, but not that bad, you know. I just want her to be better, without pain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. Well, uh. it's going to be a long road for you guys. Yeah, this is um, just the start. It's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks. Well, I think we're up to that. Good. Yeah. Hey, Pop. It's just horrendous to think what Poppy's been through, but she's so lucky that she's got Lisa by her side, and I know that Lisa will do everything she can to get Poppy happy and healthy again. Oh, where's my little Poppy? Here she is. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> <laughs> mm, lovely thing. Oh, fix your pop. Hello. How are you? Hello. Come on then. Let's After surgery up. to repair oh. Kintosh's fractured hip joint. Nurse Sam wants to see how well the little kitten's leg is moving. Good boy. Get you some physio. Hmm? Scott removed the ball from the head of Kintosh's thigh bone, but with time and gentle exercise, the muscles should take over. It's really important that we start some physio with him, although at this stage we don't know how well his leg's healing. Walking well on that leg, aren't you? Let's do it again. Good boy. I know. Don't get cross. I'm very hopeful that Kintosh will make a speedy recovery and he won't have any lasting effects from the surgery. He's been so brave. I know it's sore, but we have to do it. Good boy. Meanwhile, upstairs... It's a great email, isn't it? I've never really read anything like that before, Scott Wagmeet. <laughs> <me. laughs> Scott and Kirsty are reading an email about the next patient. This dog has got some issues I'm hoping to be he able has. to fix. He sounds like he's enjoying himself. <laughs> <laughs> Almost too much. Yeah. <laughs> Maltese Terrier Toby has a problem with excessively licking his penis, and his owners are hoping Scott can help. Hello. Hello. You must see Pamela and Kevin. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too, Pamela. Thanks for coming down and seeing us. Now let's see the man of the hour. The man of the hour is Toby. Toby. Hello, handsome oh. boy. How are you? Hi. All right, then. Come on, Toby. Let's get you in that consult room. Hey, stop yeah. making Kirsty blush. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela and Kevin have written me possibly one of the funniest emails I think I've ever read, and I needed to meet them off the back of that, and I need to meet this dog, Toby. He's been a very naughty boy. <laughs> so let's see the problem. Whoa, hello. <laughs> yeah. Does it... Stay out it's... that far a lot? Yes, most of the time. Really? Most yeah. of the time it most looks like that. How does it come to be out? He will go outside sometimes, have a wee, come in. Dogs normally lick themselves after they've had a wee. Yeah. He just continues. Right. And then he'll lick and lick. And if I call him, he'll look up at me like, yeah. The problem is something called paraphimosis, or in layman's terms, having your lipstick out, is something that we do see in the vet practice quite regularly. But generally, with castration, the testosterone level wanes and these animals are absolutely fine. But in Toby's case, not only has castration not worked, but it's actually got worse. So I wonder if it's that he is a little bit sensitive in that area, mm -hmm. and then by licking the area to appease whatever it is that's irritating him, 
he's stumbled across the fact that it's a pretty enjoyable pastime, <laughs> and then he's just taken it to a whole other level. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think we need to look at this as a two-pronged treatment. Right. The penis is almost a little bit too big for the right. prep use, the skin. Yeah. So it's almost like the banana's too big for the banana skin. Yep. Right. And it, yep. when it pops out, it actually almost tourniquets around the end of his willy. Mm -hmm. yep. And all the laughter aside, that can actually be dangerous because yeah. it can block off the blood supply. Mm -hmm. uh, it can damage the urethra, which is the tube from the bladder to the outside. So then it can have you know, urinary issues, you can uh, have blocked bladder as a result. So there's, right. there's a lot of potentially very concerning symptoms. So I need to try and improve its size and shape. And the way that I'll be increasing the aperture where his penis comes out is by just stretching it and opening it up a little bit. Right. I'll also be placing a tack, I think, further up to try and hold, almost if you think of, you know, a, a sausage in a bun, if you held the bun up, then right. it, the, the sausage will stay in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hoping will happen here with right. Toby. As far as I'm concerned, Toby's in the perfect hands. I'm confident Scott's got a, a grip of the situation. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's a good one. He's got, he's, he's got a grip of it, yeah. That's... Toby will enjoy that. I'm going to sort you out first. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. I don't normally mind a puppy kiss, but for him, a handshake yeah. I guess, is better. Yeah. West of London at Scott's Referral Centre, Teresa has arrived with her seven year old cat, Lenny. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Lenny. Lenny is booked in to see specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. Hello, good morning. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael, and this is uh, this is Lenny. Lenny, follow me. Okay, so what's uh, what seems to be the problem with Lenny today? What's she's the... got something wrong with her ear. Okay. Uh, when I got home, she she's losing her balance. She oh. actually fell over. Oh really? Oh. And uh, yeah, and she's gone a bit floppy oh. as well. So there's definitely okay. something wrong. Okay. When you saw her falling over, do you remember what side she fell to? Was she it... was falling over to her left. To the left hand side. Yeah. All right, okay. She was shaking her head and then ah. just collapsing on the ground. Ah, okay. To see your cat falling over when they're normally so full of grace, it, it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. It was that cold dread that you know something's wrong almost with your child. She's got her head slightly tilted to the side, uh, but presumably it's been worse than that when she was falling when over, she was I falling guess. Over. Yeah, sure, okay. Mm. Well, I'm going to have a little look down her ear if she'll let me. Okay, all right. Oh, baby. Okay. Oh. Well, from that little glimpse that I got, there is a there's a little growth in the bottom of this ear canal. I'm gonna see if I can show it to you. Can you see that down there? It's kind of shiny, glistening pink thing right at the bottom. Okay, there we go. There we go. What is that? Okay, so that's um, almost definitely that's a thing called a polyp. So um, a polyp is a little growth. It's not a tumor. A polyp is an inflammatory lump. You tend to see these in cats that have maybe had cat flu as, as young kittens, and their immune system is kind of overstimulated, and you get this kind of in, inflammatory tissue starts to turn into a lump. Here is my cartoon diagram of an ear. Okay, so here's the little bit of ear that you can see. Here is what we call the vertical ear canal, okay? Lenny's polyp is growing from inside the middle ear in a bony chamber called the bulla. And this is where we perceive balance. And if you have a little growth which sits in here and presses on there, that's probably why she's been falling over. So that kind of fits. In her world, her little horizon is that way. She thinks the world is that way up. And that will probably get worse if we leave her untreated. The best way to remove the polyp is actually to go actually into the bulla itself and actually kind of remove it, remove it at source, if you like. It can be quite fiddly just because of the size of the thing that we're dealing with. And we just need to be as gentle as we can do just because of the, the, the nerves in there. But you've got to do what you've got to do to get it out because if you leave some behind, it grows back. So if, if you're keen to go ahead, we'll, we'll get you booked in for as soon as we can. And uh, we'll get Lenny sorted out. She's my baby and I love her. And I, I don't like to see her not right. Um, so I want, I want to get her fixed. I'll see you guys soon. Okay. Okay. See you soon. All right. Lovely. See you soon.
Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Mm -hmm. This is Toby. Hi Toby. In the Richmond Clinic, three-year-old Toby is about to undergo some unusual surgery. He's got a little bit of an embarrassing problem, haven't you, mate? Oh no. Should we share with the girls? They're nurses, so they'll understand. Um, that's the problem. Oh dear. That's a bit unfortunate. So during the surgery, I'll be doing the anaesthetic and just making sure that everything's OK, mainly the top end, whilst he deals with the, the bottom end. OK, sleepy time, sweetheart. Once Toby's under anaesthetic, I can really understand what's going on with his male parts. Wow, it looks even more prominent on his side there, doesn't it? One really painful finding is the hairs growing on the end of the prepuce are actually folded inward. And that's one of the major reasons why he can't retract his penis, because it just grinds to a halt. As it sticks to the hairs, the penis dries out and it stays out. So we'll do a bit of clipping, OK? Or in his case, he needs a bit of a good old manscape. So we're going to clip all this hair away as much as we can. And one thing you can really see there is just how dry it is at the end. It looks and sore, doesn't it? It does look sore. Well, hopefully this will make him more comfortable. Yeah. Come on, big boy. <laughs> Let's get you sorted. Moving Toby into the surgery room and then getting all prepped and ready to go, the first thing I'm going to do is enlarge the opening that the prep use has to allow for the penis when it does come out that the penis can go back into that bag and be nice and comfortable. So that's part one done. You can see now it has a much bigger Aperture, much bigger opening, mm -hmm. which will just allow his willy to come out when it's going to. Now what I want to do is just place the stay suture up higher. And what I'm hoping that's going to do is stop when it retracts, it can flick back in where it should in its little sleeping bag. So you can see that, Gina? So it's now sitting up much higher. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go, this is new designer penis. Well done, Scott. All right. So you can wake up. I feel that I have made sure that in future, even if Toby keeps up with this, well, a little bit of a naughty, mischievous habit, that at least his penis can return to where it should go, which is back in the comfort of the prep use, and it looks so much nicer as well. I'll be glad when Toby gets out of here. Yeah. Toby's owners, Pamela and Kevin, will be relieved when they hear the surgery is over. Hey. Hey. <laughs> So here's your little champ. There he is. Hello, man. How are you? So he has How done very well. Uh, he has a new little designer prepuce mm -hmm. down there. So what I'm hoping is that if it does come out, mm -hmm. it can go back, go back. Yeah. pretty oh, quickly and pretty easy. Yeah. Scott also has a solution that should stop Toby from licking himself. We could also use a little bit of apple spray in the area, and it might just be that he, he licks it. Generally, they hate the flavour, uh, and I hopefully he'll... Yeah. yeah, he'll leave it alone. Yeah. 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 Yes. Very pleased. Very pleased. This is my baby. My fur baby. So looking forward to getting him home. Well, I'm sure he wants to be quite a long distance away from me, so... Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully I get to come up and see you guys in Cambridge here soon and just see how he's getting on. OK. Excellent. Yeah. That'd be brilliant. Bye, champ. Okay. See you later. See, see you later. Bye -bye. Say bye-bye. Okay. Bye. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, See right. ya. <laughs> bye. Bye, guys. Bye. See you, Christy. Are you going? Bye. Yeah. It's a new day. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Lenny. Good. How are you doing? Good. How's she doing? Are you OK? I'm, I'm quite nervous. Oh, she'll be fine. We'll take really good care of her. At Scott's okay. Referral Centre, it's time for Lenny's ear surgery. I'm excited that they're going in to help her, but I'm really nervous because I just worry with any surgery there's risk, you know, that she's under anaesthetic. I just want it to go well and I want it to come back to me and I want it to be healthy again. All right, so try not to worry. I know it's difficult, but we'll take good care of her. You say goodbye. Bye-bye, baby. Hey. See you later. All right, Lenny. Come on, then. Let's go. See you later. Take care. Bye. Come on, then. I trust Michael, and I know he'll do a really good job, but I love her, and I need her back. So I just want her to be over, and I want her to be back home with me. There we go. It's all right. Hello, darling. Specialist right. surgeon Dr Michael Hamilton 
needs to remove a large polyp from Lenny's middle ear. <coughs> She's looking at me going, you so and so. It's all right, darling. Yeah. We're going to sort you out. It's fine. Don't worry. The pre-med has landed. Lenny's surgery is about to get underway. But no one is prepared for what happens next. Is that the car there? No. It was a white car. I think it's going in that way. Yeah. Thank you. That's the one. It's the one with the big hole in the front. At Scott's referral centre, a car has crashed into the front of the clinic, narrowly missing clients in the waiting room. Apparently, uh, some lady had kind of come to the junction kind of opposite and had jumped on the accelerator instead of the brake and it went full speed straight into the building. Yeah, it could have been pretty, pretty bad, wouldn't it? But um, Kim had it all under control. She's on the phone. I think she already called the paramedics. She's on the phone to the police as well. Everyone was kind of looking pretty calm, actually, so I just kind of left them to it and went back to what I do. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured. Now, Michael can proceed with Lenny's surgery. Right. So, uh, I can feel the bullar just here. So we're just going to make a little incision just over the top of there. Lenny has a large polyp growing deep inside the bullar, or bony sacs that form the middle ear, and it's affecting the seven-year-old cat's balance. This round, bony thing here is the bullar. We just need to go a little bit further in to actually try and find this polyp now. Let's... There'll be more of that gooby oh. stuff. So we're now, we've went through the, the major part of the bullar. And you can see, if you look in there now, looks like a little set of grapes. That's all polyp. So we're going to try and grab it, gently tease it out. We're going to try and be as gentle as we can do, because we know there's lots of little nerves in here. If we can remove it in a one the chances of the neurological problems are significantly less. So that's what we're hoping for. We're going to start grabbing stuff now and just gently pulling and see how we get on. So, so far, so good. I'm just gently kind of grabbing it and pulling it and then re-grabbing it further down. It's kind of a, a bit like a, a magician pulling a handkerchief out just piece by piece. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. This is feeling really, really good. And there it is. I think this is most of what was in the middle ear. So I think the little bit on the left-hand side, it's almost like a little impression cast of the, the inner chamber, which is quite small. Comes out in a, pretty much in a one of this one, which is pretty satisfying. With all of the polyps successfully removed, Lenny shouldn't have any more problems with her balance. So just gonna flush it gently and then we're gonna close up. We've done the surgery. It's went really well. We've got a really good kind of uh, satisfying removal of that polyp. Suit it up and, you know, Lenny's gonna do great. It feels good. Lenny will spend the night sleeping off the anaesthetic before owner Teresa can take her home. I'm looking forward to calling Teresa and letting her know that everything's fine. You're gonna feel so much better when you come home from that. <laughs> What you doing? What you doing? After surgery to repair his fractured hip, little kitten Kintosh has made a remarkable recovery and is well enough to go home. Kintosh is looking so much happier. He's purring away. He seems pretty comfortable. And he's already putting his foot down, which is a great result. Hi, Sammy. How you doing? Hello, Scott. How you doing? Kintosh, there's your daddy. Hello, Kintosh. Here he is. Oh, I'm so pleased that he's coming home today. Um, the house ain't been the same without him, and uh, I'm really excited to, to get him home, you know? He's been what? such a brave little boy. Oh, I missed him. But now I've done the surgery, all the work is yours, my friend. Yeah. So what you're going to need to do is quite a bit of physio. Now it's all down to Sammy. He really needs to encourage Kintosh to use his leg, and the best way to do that is with physio to ensure that Kintosh does use the leg quicker and more effectively in the future. So you just try and stretch. I know, I know, I know. So if you can manage to do it, last one, last one, last one, it will get less and less painful and become more and more easy for you to do. But uh, he is a fairly forgiving boy. 
It is very upsetting that Kintosh has had to go through this whole process, that he's broken his hip and that he has needed to have this salvage procedure. But there is a silver lining in the fact that being a baby, hopefully he'll forget all the discomfort and the pain. And so hopefully moving forward, he'll leave all that baggage behind him and be a healthy, happy kitten who does run around like a normal cat should. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good on you. Thank Good you, to Scott. See you. Thank Take you very care, much Sam. for your help. Bye Take bye, care mate. now. See bye. ya. Bye, Kintosh. Hey, Lenny. How you doing, my friend? It's also on, time then. for Lenny to go home with his relieved owner, Teresa. You know that it's going to be okay, but there's always that chance that just maybe something will go wrong, something unforeseen, and until you get that call, you just don't know. Hi, Teresa. Hello. You can relax. Everything went fine. Hello, my Here she is. Hello, Here she buddy. is. So she's recovered really, really well. So please, thank um, you so uh, much. So yeah, really chuffed with how it went in theatre. We got into the buller and sure enough, there was this little shiny thing, the suspected polyp, and we kind of pulled it and it kind of gently kind of came out in a one. It was really satisfying. Fantastic. So, yeah, really good. And that's why her neurological signs are probably no worse at all. She looks think. fantastic. No, really, really chuffed with her. Hello, baby. I'm really pleased. They found what they were looking for. They've got it out and it all went really well. I'm so happy. There you go, she looks great. She looks awesome. She looks really good, yeah. So really pleased. Fantastic. Uh, over to you for some TLC. I love Michael. I adore him. He's saved my Lenny. He's remarkable and he's done an amazing job. I'm really, really happy. Are you feeling better? Are you feeling better? Yes. Yes, you are. And for one-year-old German Shepherd Poppy, a run in the park is no longer a painful ordeal. Good girl, Pop. Scott diagnosed Pop. severe hip dysplasia Pop. in the young dog Pop. and prescribed intense physio and hydrotherapy in the hope of avoiding surgery in the future. Good girl. It's still early days, but so far the results are promising. It has been quite a tough journey, obviously, getting Poppy to do the hydrotherapy. Um, she still goes. Every other week, we're still taking her. Sit. All right, Buster, sit. Lisa now has a second rescue dog, Buster, and he's been the perfect playmate. He's great with her, and she's great with him. They absolutely love each other. I hate being apart. <laughs> Hello, Poppy. Hi, Hello. Lisa. How, Hi, are Scott, you? how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. You're well. Yes, I'm good, thanks. I can't believe it. I've been watching you throwing the ball for this beautiful girl, and you are doing so well. I can't believe how well she's doing. It's amazing. I don't think she's got pain anymore. I don't think she's... I mean, the way that she runs and jumps around and plays with Buster, yeah, I think she's a lot more comfortable. Don't know if I'll be able to promise that forever she'll not have surgery, but I think to be able to push it away until she's maybe a little bit older and a little bit happier with vets. Uh, so we can do as a procedure as big as that. But in the meantime, I think you've, you've performed a miracle, yeah. Lisa. You really have. This is a dog that could barely move without a huge amount of discomfort. And now she's chasing balls. She seems an incredibly happy, transformed dog. And it's all down to the incredibly dedicated Lisa. Where's that ball? I think don't rule surgery out. I mean, she might have to have it in the future, but the way she is now and the way she runs around, she seems such a happier dog. Come on, good girl. I'm happy. I'm very happy. Good girl, Pop Pop. And as for Toby, Scott is keen to see for himself if the little dog's rather embarrassing problem has been sorted. Hello, Toby. Hello. Hello, Pam. Hello, Scott. How are you? I'm really well. Good. Have you been behaving yourself? Yeah. He's been a good boy. Great. Let's have a chat. Whoa, well, hello. <laughs> Toby's fascination with a certain part of his anatomy was proving to be a serious medical issue, and Scott was forced to operate. Uh -huh. There you go. This new designer penis. Well done, Scott. Well, the first thing I can see is that the hole that his penis could come out of, the frepuse, is, is a lot bigger, so it's maintained the size, so yeah. it should mean that at least it slips back into that covering rather than get stuck out, which yeah. was the problem. The second thing was, of course, his behavioural 
problem, his habit of... Of licking. Licking the area. I use the apple bitter spray. Oh, yeah, I see that here. Yeah. Oh, look, he doesn't even like the look of it now. No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's almost like just getting out the bottles enough to it, put him off. It does put him off. Scott was thrilled with Toby's progression here. A team effort. It was, definitely. And Toby's now a different dog. <laughs> It's very good to see now, though, that he isn't uh, focusing so much on himself and all that me time is now translated into family time, which is yes, just absolutely. far healthier, really, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? <laughs> far nicer for everyone. Hey, yes, share the love, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lily, what are we going to do with you? Hey, what are we going to do with you? Scott's first two patients are in Teddington. Sisters Pickle and Lily are waiting with their owner, Sally. For the last year or so, they have been a bit incontinent. Well, for most of their lives, we've noticed little bits of dribbling, but it has started to get worse, to the extent now that quite often they're lying there and you just literally see urine dribbling out of them and they've absolutely no idea that that's happened. So, yeah, it's starting to get quite annoying now, not to mention very wet and smelly. <laughs> Sally and her daughter Katrina love their two girls. Move my boob. Look at my ear. Look at me. But the constant leaking is out of control and they're desperate to get it fixed. Poor little pickle. And now she's weed on me. <laughs> oh. Looks like half wet myself. <laughs> it's just a, a normal day in the household, eh? I'd really like to have two dogs that don't leak all over the floor. I'd like to be able to walk into my house, sit down on the sofa and not shoot straight back up again with a wet bottom. So definitely hopeful that Scott will get to the bottom of all of this. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you, mate? Good, how are you? I'm really good. Nice I'm really. I'm looking forward to seeing you. these girls. Well, please come and meet them. What is that smell, Sal? Oh, sorry. There's a serious pong. Yeah, Isn't there in here? There's I a know, serious smell. Oh, and actually, look. Oh, lovely. I wonder what the smell was, and uh, there's the answer. Who's the culprit for that? Which one? Hey, who's looking sheepish? Walking into Sally's house, straight away I'm hit with a wall of smell. It's not a good smell. This isn't potpourri. This is the smell of wee. Not a very good start. Yeah. So still. do they both? We around the house. They do. At the moment, Lily's probably slightly worse. You can actually see it flowing out of her sometimes. And how often <sighs> are we talking? Once or twice a day. Once or twice a day? Yeah. Your dogs are peeing in the house? Well, they're not peeing, they're dribbling. Oh, Sal. <sighs> the obvious problem in Sally's house is that she is wading through puddles of wee. Lily has urinated on the floor and she doesn't know that she's done it. And that's clearly a worry. <laughs> yeah. Can I have a little feel of you? All right. Sal, is there ever any blood in the urine at all? Not that I've noticed. Okay, so it just looks like normal old yeah. wee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just inappropriately positioned. Yes. <laughs> yes. Usually on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they wee on your lap? Yeah. Oh, that's great. But grim. they don't wee, they dribble. I love the way that you're making excuses for them, which is lovely. <laughs> I know, I know. But your version of normal is not normal. No. Having an examination of the two dogs, I can see they're very healthy and they're clearly much loved. But there is a problem here. I'm not sure what it is. It could be a congenitally inherited condition that they've had since they were puppies. It could be infection. It could be hormonal urinary incontinence. There's a lot of question marks here. So what I need to do is to take both dogs into the practice where I'll understand exactly what's going on. Come on, let's say bye to mommy. Bye bye. See, see ya. Bye. Bye bye. Bye-bye, girls. Off to the practice with you. Come on. Yes. Try and cross your legs for the journeys, would you, girls? Yeah. Thank you. These girls are weeing all over Sally's house. So Jess, if you want to take her through to X-ray. Back at the practice, Stop. Scott is going to X-ray both of Sally's dogs, starting with Lily. But first, a special dye is being injected, which will outline the urinary tract and show up any abnormalities. Right, X-ray. We take a series of X-rays. It will look a little bit like a roadmap of the urinary tract and see if there's any reason why these girls are incontinent. It's weird. Very strange indeed. 
Mm. I'm doubting myself now because I'm just <laughs> doubting what I'm seeing on X-ray. The X-ray looks like there's one kidney, which is pretty strange. Uh, and it also doesn't really explain why the dog's incontinent. Establishing that Lily doesn't have a left kidney, I don't exactly know what to think of it, and it's certainly not something that I was expecting. I then moved to do an ultrasound on Pickle, because I just want to make sure that she does definitely have both kidneys. Okay, so there's one. Yeah, and there's, there's the second one. Thankfully, she does, but I still feel that as these sisters are genetically related, and the problem with Lily is likely to be a congenital abnormality from birth, they can both share similar issues. Good girls, that's it, come on, come on. Where's mummy? Hello, baby. Hello, Hello mummy. has arrived, hopeful that Scott has found the reason for her leaky oh, dogs. I need to sit down after oh, that. <laughs> so I have done a excretory urography. It's basically a contrast yeah. Yeah. image of the urinary system. Yeah. And it seems like Lily doesn't have a left kidney. What? I then just ultrasounded Pickle yeah. to make sure that I wasn't going mad <laughs> and I could see that there is actually two kidneys in okay. her abdomen. Right. But this is yeah. clearly some sort of congenital abnormality, so from birth. Okay. So we need to send you up to the Royal Veterinary College where the specialists there will do a CT scan and that'll give a lovely 3D image of everything that we need to check out and see what's what and what's not and also do a cystoscopy, which is basically where they put a camera into the bladder and they have a look around, not only to see where the ureters come from the kidneys into the bladder mm -hmm. and where they drain. Yeah, okay. All right then, Sal. Okay, well, thank you very much. So now I'm going to be sending Sally and the girls up to the Royal Veterinary College where the specialists will be performing some more tests and then hopefully try and fix them. Bye, mate. <laughs> oh, bye, Scotty. Bye. If he wants them to go up there, they'll go up there. Trust him implicitly. But, yeah, I'm worried. Hmm. Go on, let's go. Scott's now taking a break from his London practices and heading west to Wales to polish up his skills as a farm vet. I'm really excited to be heading out to West Wales again. The people that live out here are absolutely awesome. They're so down to earth and they're really dedicated to the animals that they look after. So I'm honoured actually that they've asked me to come out and help. Scott's first stop will be the historic town of St Clair's. Now last time I was here, I really had to earn my stripes as a farm vet, doing things that I haven't done since my uni days. It's got a lovely temperament. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> oh, man. We'll make a farm bet of you yet, Scott. <laughs> Welcome to Wales. This time I'm going to have to step up another level because it's all hands on deck. The vets are so busy this time of year, so I just hope that I can keep up with the pace. Scott will be based at the Market Hall Practice, which looks after local pets as well as animals at surrounding farms, and he's checking in with head vet David Stark. Morning, David. Good morning. How are you? Good to see yeah, you again. Great. So what have we got planned? Uh, lots of lots of carvings, lots of sheep, lots of cattle, hopefully lots of horses. Yeah, those lined up uh, for the week, Scott. All right, well, I've got some overalls in the car, I promise. So oh, I'm, great. Good. Should I go and chuck them on? Yes. Awesome. Great one. Nice one, Dave. Good okay, to see Scott. you. Cheers. Scott's being put straight to work after a call about an emergency at a local dairy farm. A Jersey cattle owner has called to say that one of her girls is very sick. All we know is that this poor girl isn't eating and she does have a calf. Scott will be working under the guidance of vet Vicky. Right, time to get okay. suited up. Yep. She deals with big farm animals oh, on a daily basis. What we need. But Scott hasn't done any major procedures on a cow since his university days. Oh my goodness, here we go. Waiting anxiously is dairy farmer Helen. She's worried about her much loved cow Athena, who's recently become a new mum. She just looks generally miserable um, and not happy with life. We never have problems with calvings the jerseys. So I'm a little bit nervous. Hi, I'm Scott. How are Hi, you? I'm Helen. How are Hi, you? Hi, Helen. And here's this gorgeous beast. This is Athena. 
Afina. Very beautiful. Right, so what are the issues that you've been having with your cow? Um, she's been calved just under a week, and we've noticed the last few days um, that she hasn't really been eating as much as I'd like her to. She just looked a little bit depressed. Right. First thing, uh, let's have a little listen to her heart. That's all clear, so I'll just listen to her stomach. Oh, do you want to have a listen? There's not a huge amount of noise going no, on in there. No, it's quite which, quiet. Yeah. That rumen's not moving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 so it's just not functioning no. at the moment. Yeah. All I can hear is complete silence, and that's a real concern. The four stomachs inside a cow should make a lot of noise, and when they don't, that's a worry. I believe that this cow might be suffering with a condition known as left displacement of the abomasum, or LDA. It's basically where one of the four stomachs is twisted and can commonly happen after a cow has had a calf. The way that LDA is diagnosed is by using percussion, so basically tapping on the side of the abdomen of the cow. You hear it? Oh, wow, yeah, there. there. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That is a lot different to the surrounding area. It's very distinctive sound, isn't it? Yeah. We can hear a very tinny sound, which basically sounds like a, a bag, which is the abomasum, filled with gas. It's, so it sounds a little bit like a drum. So pretty much part of the stomach that's here needs to go over there. Yeah. And the only way to do that is by reaching in. Um, pulling it back. Pulling out. it out. Athena at the moment's uncomfortable and she isn't eating and she will lose weight quickly, so we need to intervene with this surgery. First, I just need to get a little local. In Wales, Scott and farm vet Vicky are about to begin critical surgery on new mum Athena. You're not going to like this, are you? You're going to jump a bit. She's being given a numbing injection in her side but she'll be awake throughout the procedure. Good girl. I know, I know. If a large animal is calm enough and quiet enough with just a light sedation and local anaesthetic at the site of the incision, it's far better for them and it's far safer as well. It's a nice happy jogs for you, sweetie. After carving, the much-loved Jersey cow has been left with a badly twisted stomach. One of her stomachs is full of gas and has moved to the wrong place. So uh, we need to get that back in the right place. But sometimes you can open them up and they've been twisted for a long time and the abdomen has started to react. So until you open them up, you don't really know what you're going to find. First, Scott and Vicky need to release the trapped gas before moving the stomach back into place. Good to go? Yep. The procedure will be performed through an incision made in Athena's side. I'm always nervous when surgery is involved in any animal. We haven't had a huge amount of them done here either, so from an owner's point of view, it's, it's a little bit nervous to watch it happen, yeah. I can just feel across. I can feel a nice big stomach on the other side. Right. So now we're going to deflate the uh, stomach. So this deflate. is quite a dangerous moment, really, isn't it, Vicky? Yeah, this is quite a big needle, and the idea is we want to just take the needle across, put it straight into the abomasum mm -hmm. and get the air out. Back in my uni days, we learned about farm animal stuff, but it's about 20 years ago, so I do need to refresh my skills with these fantastic farm animal vets. So, mm -hmm. if you're gonna stab anything, stab yourself. Right. <laughs> so, you okay. wanna take that? Yeah, so. Guard it. I just wanna keep that on there and guard it with my life. Yep. All right, Athena, you can trust me, sweetie. So, round, round the intestines. Oh my goodness, that is actually quite hard to do. Yeah. Without stabbing yourself. Yeah. So once we open up the cow, you're going in blind. It's just experience and knowing what's normal and navigating under and round quite important bits of anatomy. And then? Put just straight in. Straight in. As far as you can. Okay. And then it's going in now. There we are. So the gas that comes out, that's basically fermented grass. That's what they're eating at the moment. And it's sat there for a good couple of days, so it's quite rancid to kind of smell, really. My heart is actually going. Doing that. <laughs> so that is, that's, that's frightening, is uh, performing a procedure like that, a massively sharp needle around this poor girl's organs. Protect the needle, bring it back out. Okay. Yep. Okay, please don't move. Okay. Good girl. There we 
we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Brilliant. Oh, man. <laughs> Fingers intact? Fingers intact, <laughs> cows intact. With the gas removed, the stomach now has to be manipulated back into its correct position. So what Vic and I have been able to do is to retrieve the abomasum, which was uh, over on the left-hand side where it shouldn't be, pulled it underneath and then up, and now Vicky's busily lassoing it to this right-hand side of the cow. And what that does means a little bit of scar tissue will form. It'll stick the stomach where it should be on the right-hand side, and hopefully it'll never flip where it shouldn't go again. So, so we'll yeah, pull that tight. It's nicely attached to that attached there. The wall. So I just need to stitch the skin. The suturing of a cow is uh, actually really quite difficult because what we're suturing is leather. So it's very thick and uh, very tough to get through. But uh, at the same time, you want to get a nice, pretty result so that the farmer's happy, just like our owners back at Richmond. All right, last one, sweetheart, last one. That's it. Yeah, all zipped up. Very nice, lovely. Right. An antibiotic spray completes Athena's treatment. Great, good job. Athena is immediately looking so much brighter. She just looks like a different cow already. I was really happy with how Scott and Vicky worked together to get it done. So it went really well. You couldn't have gone any better. Before Scott leaves, he wants to see how Athena's six-day-old calf is coping without his mum. This is Athena's son, Achilles. Hello, mate. Oh, hello, beautiful. Whilst mummy was getting surgery, you didn't get your breakfast, did you? Hey, no, you didn't. Here we go, you gonna have some? There you go. There's the good stuff right there. Yeah, oh, yummy. Good boy. It's been a really incredible day today to be able to work alongside Vicky and to help Athena and now to feed this adorable little youngster. It's been a great end to an absolutely perfect day and now I can see the benefits of being a farm vet. Pretty nice, really. Well, they seem to enjoy that and hopefully Athena will be able to do the job moving forward. Yeah, she's already looking a lot brighter, so hopefully he'll be back in with her tomorrow morning, hopefully, to just have a little bit of a, a sack, and then she can go out with the rest of the cows then. Yeah, unless you want to come home with me, eh? Eh? Yeah. Come on, good girls. Let's go find out what today he's got to bring, shall we? Back in town, Sally has arrived at the Royal Veterinary College with her two bulldogs, Lily and Pickle. Come on, Lou. Good girls. Hi there, Sally. Hi, yes. Hi, Stein. Hi, Stein. Uh, nice one of the internal you. medicine specialists with my team. Uh, Hi, team. <laughs> and these are Pickle and Lily. That's correct. Did I get it right? Yeah, yes, you did very well. good. <laughs> and uh, they are weeing in inappropriate places, they right? They are weeing everywhere. Very good. Yeah. So, yes, up to us to figure nice. out why that might be happening and please. see whether or not we can do something about it. Pretty please. Very good. Shall we get a room? <laughs> yeah. That's Thank good. you. Follow us. Go on, yes. Pickle, Lily. Here we go. Yeah. Come on, girls. Pickle and Lily are incontinence. We thought it was just a little bit of dribbling here and there, but it's getting worse as they're getting older. They're now starting to lie there and, um, yeah, it's not very pleasant, basically. Nice damp floors, nice damp sofas, house smelling of pee. It's, um, yeah, getting a little bit unpleasant. Hello, you. Internal medicine specialist Dr Stein Neeson will be in charge of the investigation. And we can see the problem in action here with already a puddle being created. So I see many of these cases on a yearly basis, but Lily poses a real dramatic case with the urine dribbling in front of my eyes on the examination table. I can't imagine how difficult it is to have Lily in your own home. So we definitely need to try and fix this. Right, we need to figure out what the detailed anatomy is of both Pickles and Lily's urinary tract mm -hmm. because something is preventing both of them to keep the urine in the bladder. So I would suggest that we use a CT scanner to really get down and dirty with the mm -hmm. anatomy of uh, both Lily and Pickles. What started off with just being a few dribbles is now turning into puddles and I think before long we'll be turning into lakes. Lily is first in the CT machine. When Scott x-rayed Lily, he discovered she had only one kidney. So the fact that Lily has only got one kidney is slightly odd, but that sort of gives me a hint that I should be open-minded as a vet to look for other 
abnormalities that Lily was born with. The one point that I'm looking at here is this white dot, which is the tubing that normally goes from the kidney to the bladder. What happens here with Lily is that this tubing is actually ending up very, very late into the urinary tract in the bit that we call the urethra, which is not in the bladder anymore. So that explains perfectly well why Lily is incontinent, because if your urine goes not into your bladder, but into your urethra, there's no mechanism to stop it from coming out. Now it's Pickle's turn to be scanned. Unlike her sister, Lily, Pickle was born with both kidneys. So we've just done Pickle CT scan and we've got a double whammy. Pickle does have two kidneys and both kidneys are ending up putting the urine in the wrong place, way too far back. So Pickle has got the same problem as her sister. It's time to break the news to owner Sally. So they both have an ectopic ureter, which basically means that we've got a bad connection between kidney and bladder. And we are going to try to create a good connection once again. Um, and the strategy we will be looking forward to trying to use is a laser technique. Okay. So basically you're talking about rewiring my dogs. <laughs> yeah, well, re-plumbing, actually. Fair enough. <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant news because it's something we can actually do something about. Yeah, what I really didn't want was to be told that this was behavioural and then it's something that's out of my hands, but this is something that we can actually work on. Surgery on both the dogs will be scheduled for tomorrow. Not quite home and dry, but certainly, hopefully, a lot drier than we were before. Scott's next job is with Vet David at a local sheep and cattle farm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. All right. Hi, I'm Scott. How you doing? Good. Scott, Good. this is Hugh. Hey, Hugh. Right. How are you? Good, thanks. So I'm guessing uh, cattle here? No, we're down here. What's yeah. down here? Oh, this cover looks Scott. Here they are. Okay, sheep. Yep. Seeing that my patients are sheep, it does make me quite nervous. We don't have many sheep running around the fields of Richmond. <laughs> yes, we've got two rams here. Okay. And Hugh has also come along to turn them into teaser rams for him. That means that we need to give them a rather indelicate cut, don't we? Yep. Yeah. A teaser ram is basically produced when they get a vasectomy. That means that they can no longer make babies. So basically, they encourage all the ewes to cycle at the same time so that when the real ram comes in, all the females are receptive and then the lambs are born around about the same time of the year. Scott, while you catch them, I'll go get my gear ready. These rams are quite tough and, and they're quite agile. And Scott has got his work cut out. Good luck. Good luck. I can relate, boys. My wife's trying to convince me to do exactly the same thing we're about to do on them. Ouch. Okay, let's go, come on. One thing I do remember about sheep is they can be quite feisty, they can be quite grumpy, and they're very good at kicking. He's bloody strong. <laughs> In Wales, Scott is trying to catch a ram so he can perform a vasectomy. Hey Scott, you're yeah. the wrong one there. <laughs> Hugh is a classic example of a Welsh farmer. Great sense of humour, great fun, very hospitable. Not funny, Hugh. Not funny. <laughs> but more than happy to let the city boy go in and look like a fool. <laughs> okay, come on, mate. Wait. wait. He's not the best at handling sheep, I'm not saying, and catching them, but he managed just about. It was a bit funny, it was a bit entertaining. I wouldn't want to go over there either if I was you. 
Come on. He really heard what we said we were going to do to him. You can tell he's not keen. On a farm, we have to make do with what we've got. So using a hay bale as a surgical table is all we've got. And obviously, it's not the most sterile environment, but we wash up and we scrub up and we clean things as best we can. Right, so if you feel the cord, Scott, you can feel the, um, the part you want to cut out, the vas deferens underneath there. Yeah, so you've got the spermatic cord, which is the blood supply and also the tube that allows the sperm to come to the outside, and that's yes. the one we want to cut. That's the one we want to cut. But there's a whole lot of blood vessels coming down here, so we have to avoid the blood vessels. Mm. Otherwise... Yeah, complications. Mm. There we are. See, it is quite a delicate operation, isn't it? Yeah. Just in there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I think, I think, you, I think you've got it now. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that nice white fibrous cord. Bring that out. And then... Okay. okay. Should we close this boy up? Right. The name is Ram Scott now, then. That's right, I think so. You're going to name it Scott now. <laughs> oh. De definitely. Yeah. Right. Okay. Scott, no chance of having any lambs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Come on boy. mate. Up you get. Come, Come on, boys. good boy. There we go. Good well boy. Well done. Oh. He'll soon recover, Scott. Yeah. Yeah. We're quite asleep already. Yeah, so we're pretty chilled. A world away at the high-tech Royal Veterinary College, bladder surgery on incontinent bulldogs Pickle and Lily is about to begin. Their condition is rare, so they've been brought to the RVC, where Dr. Roseanne Jepson will perform specialised laser surgery. Both Lily and Pickle have abnormalities in their urinary tract. So they have tubes that connect the wrong components together, essentially. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a laser to try and correct those changes. Laser is a really exciting form of surgery because it's minimally invasive. And this is one of the reasons it's attractive not only to owners, but also to the pets themselves, because it means that their recovery time is much, much faster. Okay, I think we're ready to start. Lily is first to undergo the procedure. Dr. Roseanne and her team are using a camera to explore Lily's urinary tract. So the kidney that she does have is to her right, right, which would fit with that being the opening to the to right, right yeah. ureter. So we're about to start lasering. So we're going to laser the abnormal band of tissue between where the tube from the kidney down to the bladder should be and essentially open that out so that the urine comes down that tube into the bladder um, rather than opening out in the urethra where it is at the moment. Stop. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. OK. So we've been able to laser the little bit of excess tissue that was present. We did find one slightly unusual finding was that she had a very small blind-ended tunnel, which may have been the opening of the ureter from the kidney that doesn't exist. But so far, so good. Procedure has gone as we hoped it would. Now it's Pickle's turn for the high-tech laser surgery. In terms of the procedure, it is quite technical. Every dog is very different, and so the same would be true for Lily and Pickle, and that creates some of the challenges that we have with this procedure. Although Pickle has both her kidneys, she shares the same genetic abnormality as her sister, which means her internal plumbing is faulty, and she constantly leaks urine. Okay. So both Lily and Pickle's procedures have gone very well today. We'll have to see how well they recover, and the next sort of 24, 48 hours really will tell us whether they're going to be continent after this procedure or not. In Wales, 
Scott's next job is going to be a challenge. I've just had a call from Philip, one of the vets, who needs some help with some horse dentistry. Now, as a small animal vet, we do dental work on dogs and cats all the time, even rabbits occasionally. But my horse dentistry, it's really quite rusty. So I'm really glad that Philip, as an experienced vet, is going to be on hand to help. Waiting for Scott and Philip yeah, are friends Sue great. and Cher and elderly mare Folly. See what sort of mood she's in today? <laughs> Folly! Hello, baby. I've had Folly 28 years now. She was my first horse, my dream horse. Yeah, I love her to bits. <laughs> You're such a good girl, aren't you? You're going to enjoy the dentist today. Her dental appointment, I believe, she doesn't mind too much. Good girl. She tends to be quite relaxed about it, and sometimes she actually looks like she's enjoying it. Come on, then. Oh. Hey, Philip. Hi, how, Scott, are you how are you doing? I called Scott today to, to give a hand with these horses. I thought it'd be something totally different for him and something he could get involved in. Love that there. Also, it's, it's just handy to have another strong person there to help hold the horses. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm nice Scott. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hi, you're Sue. I'm Sue. Hi, Hello. I'm Cher. Hi, Cher. And I've heard this gorgeous creature is Folly. It is Folly. Hello, beautiful. They say it's a bit rude to ask a lady her age, but just by the look of her, she looks like she is quite mature. Is that fair? She is mature, like her owner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, um, Folly's about 38, 39 now. Are you? You look absolutely gorgeous. Folly is so beautiful. She's got the most gorgeous blue eyes and she's one of the oldest horses I've ever met. And being that she's a little bit, pardon the pun, long in the tooth, <laughs> uh, she's getting some dental work today. She is, yeah. She hasn't got any problems that I see at the moment, but um, I still make sure that everything's right in her mouth and she's comfortable. Yeah. Horse dentistry is really important in domestic animals because domestic horses live a very long time. Normal horses in the wild live to maybe 20 or so, so the older you get, like with us, the worse your teeth get. So, Philip, this is Folly, the ripe old age of 38. Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Really good. Some horses just keep on going. Yeah. And she's looking really good for her age, too. She is. All right, so, got to put this one on. Yeah, if you just extend it. In order to be able to examine a horse's mouth properly, we need to place a gag, which is a large metal contraption. It allows the mouth to be open wide so it can assess the teeth, we can assess the gums and the tongue as well. So what do you look for first in the examination, Philip? We just check all the teeth, just like your own dentist would do with you. Just goes round, round the whole mouth. So you're feeling for sort of sharp edges, are you? Basically, yeah. It's important that we check anything in the mouth that might be causing the horse's discomfort and stop them eating properly and also old horses to be in danger of losing teeth, so we need to keep on top of what's happening in their mouths. Oh, yeah, oh, she's got a... What's happened there? Ah, oh, she's got a broken tooth. And there it is. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Whoa. Yeah. That is huge. Whereabouts is that come out it's from? It's halfway along on, on, on her offside. OK. Yeah. Halfway along? Yeah, on the bottom. My goodness. Mm. So that was a bit shocking, seeing that drop out of her mouth. You can see that root there has gone rotten. Yeah. It is quite confronting to see a tooth just come out of a horse's mouth like that. But for Folly, she's an old girl, and to lose a tooth at her age is quite normal. And the good thing about it coming out whilst we're here is that we're able to check for any underlying problems. I think yeah. that feels OK. It's not really impacting on any of the other teeth, and it's not infected. It's not seemingly causing her any discomfort. Yes, yeah, I'm happy with that. The next stage of Folly's treatment is a procedure called floating. Put a bit of downward pressure with this hand then on, on the, yep. the handle. Using in a coarse there. file, Scott will shave down any sharp edges on Folly's teeth. Yeah, you really have to give it a bit more force than you'd imagine. Good girl. Once again, it's just about not taking up too much, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. If you want to do the same then on the bottom. Folly, you're being a very good girl. She's very patient, isn't she? She's, she's, she's just so good. She's such a good girl. Oh, OK, baby. I mean, have a feel, Philip. I think yeah. that feels OK. I'm happy with that. I think it went very well. Yeah. Folly was happy with Scott. She seemed quite relaxed with him. Oh, yes, yeah, she did, yeah. She did, didn't she? Yeah. 
Oh, there you go, go baby. Okay, run. Good, Good girl. Thank you, guys. She's going to feel much more comfortable now. Now we're done with Folly's dental procedure, she's got a perfect smile. I think it's only fair, she's been a good girl at the dentist, she deserves a treat. There you go. Hey, don't tell mummy. Don't tell mummy. Yeah. Good home! It's a busy time for the farmers in the area with everyone getting ready for the local agricultural show. Go ahead. For farmer oh, Clive, it's an especially nervous day. It's my lifetime's work breeding cattle, and it's my father's lifetime's work before me. And the best barometer of judging the quality of your herd is to take them out and compare them with other people that are trying to do the same thing. But several years ago, Clive's farm was affected by the highly contagious bovine TB. Hi. Bovine tuberculosis in this part of Wales has been um, a major issue. It's a serious problem because it's a disease that affects the lungs and lymph nodes, and uh, there is a risk. Although the farm is now free from the disease, Clive's herd still has to undergo regular testing. Bring the other one in as well. And head farm vet David has just arrived. Okay. Bovine TB is spread by infected badgers, and the ramifications for farmers like Clive are enormous. Just a physical abdomen test the whole herd every 60 days is uh, it's a nightmare. Seventh case, great. You have to keep doing it and tell government find a way of actually getting rid of it so that we have healthy cattle and healthy wildlife. Ooh, it's a bit of a worry. Oh, let me, I'll have to check, Clive. I'll have yeah, to check as well. Uh, fair enough. If the tests return a positive result for TB, Clive's cows will be ineligible to be entered in the local show. All right, seven. Let's check the bottom. Seven, good. Good. That's great. Happy days. Yeah. It's such excellent news for Clive. And I'm also relieved because as a vet, there's nothing worse than bringing the farm of bad news. So to be clear today, it's a big relief. She's fine, she's clear. Great. Good. Sinclair Show, here we come. It's really good news. The cows are clear to go for Sinclair Show tomorrow. A bit of elbow grease using them tonight and a spit and polish and get them look as good as possible. So I'm very, very happy. Do you reckon they're a bit better? Yeah. I am covered in your hair, Lily. Uh, it's better than being covered in her urine. <laughs> in Teddington, two-year-old sisters Lily and Pickle have recovered well from the laser surgery on their leaky bladders. Both of them seem to be plumbed in a little bit weird, so basically the ureters weren't quite going where they should be, which meant what you were pouring in one end was pretty much coming out the other. Ready? Covered! Sally was hopeful that after the high-tech laser procedure on both the girls, her days of endlessly cleaning up after them would be over. Which body? Which body? We were always told it would be a 50% success rate, and it was a 50% success rate. One of them's working, and the other one, unfortunately, seems to be a little bit better, but certainly not where we'd hoped. So we're very pleased with the fact that Lily's now totally dry, it's fantastic. And we're very hopeful that Pickle, with a bit of medication, will have a nice dry dog at the end of all of this. So, fingers crossed. Sally is staying positive. It has made a difference. I only have to wash the sofa covers, you know, twice a week instead of four times a week. <laughs> Stinton Wales is almost over, but the locals have asked him to help out with something very dear to their hearts. After a fantastic and exhausting and exhilarating week here in Wales, I'm here at the Sinclair's show. It's all the great farmers of the area coming together with their beautiful animals to show them in the ring. The agricultural show is the highlight of the farming community's year. 
The St. Clair's Agricultural Show is a family show, it's a community show. It's been running now since late 1800s. We seem to be going from strength to strength. Morning, Clive. Good morning, Scott. Scott is keen to meet dairy farmer Clive. Say hello, ladies. His cows have passed the TB test, and now he's hoping for a win in the ring. And what's the general sort of physical attributes that they're looking for in a winner? In a winner, you, you want a nice, tall, fine-bodied animal. We're talking about cows, right? The cows, okay. yes. We are talking about cows. <laughs> Just checking. It's, it, it's, uh, <laughs> but you want a good-looking... Uh, a uh, good-looking cow. Yep. It's like it's nice to have a good-looking woman on your arm as well. Uh, well, absolutely. <laughs> the cows will need some last-minute spit and polish, and Clive has roped in Scott to help. Right. Don't let go. OK. I won't. What's her name? Tunisia. A very fancy name for a girl from <laughs> Wales, isn't it? I'm feeling confident for Clive, and I really hope that after all the bad luck that he's had, he can have a win here. Shampoo in a cow, so... It's, uh, not so, something I've done before. I just thought when a cow would come, they'd be cleaned first, but in fact, <laughs> they don't travel well. And I want her shining. You want her shining? Oh, I don't want to see any muck on her okay. whatsoever. Nizzy, you and I are going to have words. A bit like when you used to earn your pocket money and you have to wash your dad's car. I'm not giving you pocket money. <laughs> I don't even get pocket money. Great. I've never actually uh, had to shine up a cow before, but she seems to be enjoying it. And in fairness, she looks awesome. Hey, you're ready to go, ready to hit the ring. I'm really hoping today that I get to walk one of the cows into the ring. It'll be quite an honor to be able to do that. And I'm wondering what technique there is. I kind of remember the dog ladies at Crufts that sort of have that jaunty little run as they run in with a big smile on their face. So I'm hoping it's something similar and I hope that I do Clive proud. Are you all right there then, Scott? Back there? Oh yeah, never been better. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, oh, I should... hope no one's watching this. Make sure it doesn't miss the bucket. Yeah. And I warn you, if she coughs. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be okay Good luck. Tunisia's been entered in the cow with calf category, where judges will be looking for a wide body, strong legs, and big udders. Oh! <laughs> Clive's cow just decided to have a sit down mid walk, which was uh, <laughs> lazy at best, but she's still looking beautiful. And she's caught the judge's eye, making it to the final two in her class. There you go. All right. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, well done, Clive. Good job, mate. Second prize for today. She's a cracking cow that beat me, and uh, they both looked very well in the ring, so I was, I was quite happy. Scott's a good help. He's, he's marvellous, you know, I couldn't manage without him. He'll have to come every time I go to win. <laughs> Scott's now back on more familiar territory. Wow, there are some very strong contenders. The organisers have invited him to be the guest judge in the canine novelty section. Everyone smile. Everybody was booked in to have their hair done ready for Scott at St Clair's show. Oh, you're so pretty. Your dad's done a great job of your coat. Look at that. You're a bit grumpy, but you've got very nice eyes. <laughs> wow, that must have taken some work, I would have thought. There's lots of things that I'm looking for as part of this competition, and it isn't just about doggy good looks. I'm looking for healthy body condition, a lovely, shiny, silky, well-groomed coat, beautiful white teeth, and even their age. She's one of the oldest Leos being shown in the country. Of course she was a Liam Burgess. She's yeah. gorgeous. She's nine in a couple of weeks. Such nice dogs you've got in St. Clair's, haven't you? How well the dogs perform in the ring is also important. Very nice. Very pretty girl. Some stiff competition there. Hmm. Before Scott announces the winner, he needs to award the runner-up. Reserve champion goes to our lovely old lady right here. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. My pleasure. Beautiful. <laughs> And now it's decision time for the all-important best in show. Well, firstly, can I say you're all winners and they're all fantastic dogs, but the winner of the St. Clair's Agricultural Show 2017 
Here's the Bernays. Congratulations. Well done. Good job. Well done. Good girl. Here we go. That's yours. That's yours. Should I put it on you or the dog? I'm going to put it on you. You can just say you're the champion of everything. There we go. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Good girl. I do watch him on the telly. It's not every day you all cuddle with a celebrity, is it? <laughs> The 139th St. Clair's show has been a resounding success as Scott prepares to leave Wales for home. Hey Scott, it's been great to have you and the team here again for a few days. Thanks. I think we've all enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, I've really enjoyed myself and uh, hopefully I've impressed you with my farm skills a little bit. Yeah, Scott, I think slowly we can see the farm bed emerging in you. <laughs> Boys, it's been a pleasure. Our pleasure, really good. Thanks for having us. Great having you again. Cheers. Hope Cheers. to see you again soon. All the best. Bye. Okay, David. Yeah. Let's go, go for a beer. Beer. Yeah. Come on. I've absolutely loved my time here in Wales. The country people and their relationship with their animals is just so special. Today's been just a massive celebration of that fact, and I've been very honoured to be a part of it. I'm just on a long drive up to North London to visit the All Dogs Matter charity. They are a fantastic organisation that rescue dogs that are stray here in the capital. And today they've given me a call about an old dog that has a problem list as long as your arm. So I'm just driving up there straight away to see if there's anything that I can do to help. It's a baby, aren't you? Animal rescuer Sonia is waiting with a 14-year-old English Bull Terrier called Arnie. So we rescued Arnie from the local pound. Arnie's coming in a really bad condition and he really needs Scott to have a good look at him and, and make him better again, make him the handsome boy that he was. Hello, Sonia. Hi, Scott, how are you? Hi. Great to see you. And you. This is Arnie. Hello, boy. Come on. Oh, he's an English Bull Terrier. He is, he is. Oh, my goodness, you are so handsome, aren't you? Boy. You are so handsome. Sonia wouldn't have known this, but I had a rescue English Bull Terrier when I was going through university. His name was Zed. We had a massive bromance. I absolutely adored him. So to see another one here that I can help today, I think it's really special. He's got a nice shiny coat. He's a little nice, bit thin, lovely. isn't he? Mm. A bit underweight. A bit underweight, yeah. And, and anything else? He's got problems with his ears and his teeth as well. His teeth, yeah. Are they bad? Can I have a look at this side, honey boy? boy? Oh, boy. yeah, they're horrible. Then we've also got his claws. Oh, ouchie, archie, look at that. Yeah. Straight away, Some that dew claws growing, grown there. Growing. And, and then, then oh. he's got this huge lump. Oh, my goodness me. That didn't grow overnight, no. so someone has literally just left that yeah. to mean, grow. How long would you say that's been there for? Oh, probably a good year, I would say. I mean, it depends on what it is. And that's the real worry, is it could be something benign, it could be something horrendously malignant, so we won't know until yeah. we take it off. It really is sad to see a dog come in at that age. For us, it's, it, it's shocking really. I mean, it's disgusting that people can abandon a dog at any age, but when they really need you and they're in such a bad way, it's, I've, I've got no words really. Who abandons a dog? I mean, he's given you all that love and attention mm -hmm. and joy, and then at the tail end of his life, when he's got a few issues, mm -hmm. dump him. Just heartless. It's too sad. It's always very upsetting to see any rescue animal and understand why they have just been turfed out of a loving home. Arnie particularly is pulling at my heartstrings. I absolutely love them as a breed. I know what they're like. I know how loving and loyal they are. And his owners have gone, you know what, we've had our best years with him we're going to turf him out. It just angers me to the very core. I think I might take him with me, son. OK, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> yeah. Scott's going to take him back to Richmond. Him and his team are going to do some wonderful work on Arnie. Bye, darling. He has got a lot of things wrong with him at the moment, but if anyone can make him better, paws crossed, Scott can do that. Let's go to Richmond, hey? Let's show off the big muscly boy. Yes, yeah, yeah. Orlando, tell me the truth. Did you just give Coco some food under the table, yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious you did. You were guilty as charged, young man. Unlike Arnie, 
Coco the pug is a very much loved family pet. It's definitely got a sibling vibe, their relationship. They don't just treat her like a dog, they treat her like an equal. If they're not with her, they miss her. When they come back from school, the first thing they want to do is see her. They kind of fight over who gets to have her. It's a loving, general loving. Good girl. But the bond is closest between Good Coco girl. and That's Anna awesome. herself. Yes. Our relationship is very intense. It is a love affair. I mean, we spend all our time together. It was important that I had to get a girl because I am the only woman in this house with three sons and my husband. I mean, she is like one of my children, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, she's my, my fourth child. <laughs> you have, to have a nap now, don't you, after all that eating? She likes the good life. She likes human food. She will bark at the TV if she doesn't like the show. She'll bark at my feet if she wants me to pick her up. So yeah, we kind of slightly have to sort of pander to her needs, let's say. Anna is dreading her trip to the vets tomorrow. She will have to hand over her special girl for her spay operation. It is going to be scary kind of leaving her. I don't think I've ever actually left her before. Coco might be unaware of the impending surgery, but she's lapping up all the extra attention. Massaged, pampered, stroked, nestled on me. There's nowhere that you'd rather be, is there, young lady? She is little, she is a baby, and um, yeah, it's going to be a bit nerve-wracking. Good girl. Come on, this way. Good boy, come on. Here we go. Come on. Scott has arrived back come at the on. Richmond Clinic with come elderly on. rescue dog Arnie. Come on. Good boy. Can you come? Hi, guys. Hi, yes. Scott. Can I introduce you to a very special boy? Arnie is this getting is a Arnie. warm welcome from Nurse Nathan and receptionist Kirsty. He is a rescue dog. Unfortunately, his owners, after having him for 12 years, 13 years, have decided that they're just going to dump him. Aww. He's an old boy with quite a few problems. Come on in. Go with Uncle Nathan. Here he is. Here he is. Come on in. <laughs> All right. I've just put a call through to a really good friend of mine to help with Arnie's care, and she is very much a fellow Bull Terrier lover. Ali, well, she's always wanted to be a veterinary nurse, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity for her to have a spot of work experience with her favourite breed. What do you reckon she's, she's gonna... <laughs> she's gonna go sick for you. She is. She is. Ali, this is Arnie. Don't cry, you're gonna make me cry. Oh, hello, hello, darling. When I walked down and saw him, it was, well, it was a shock. It was memories, it was, yeah, mixed emotions, but he's such a sweetheart. Ali's first dog was an English Bull Terrier called Ruck, and it was through him that she first met Scott. Ruck has since passed away, but Scott and Ali have been firm friends ever since. He's beautiful, isn't he? He's very gorgeous. It just brings all the memories flooding back. So you start thinking about your dog and all the history with Scott and just how sad I was to lose mine. I just wanted to meet the little fella and see if he was all right. Go and put some scrubs on, my dear. Scott has another motive for calling Ali in today. He needs to talk about what <laughs> he's hoping she might boy. even consider adopting the old dog right. once he's nursed back to good health. What he needs is a mountain of love. This boy has been shortchanged and he needs love urgently. Ali has such empathy and such care for animals and she really wants to make Arnie feel loved, which is possibly the first time in his life he's really felt it. Ta-da! Ah, look. Oh, Looks more ready. nursey already. So Very I good. Am. Right. I'm ready to look after the fella. Yes. So he has quite the litany of problems and we need to just prioritise as his Veterinary care is what we're going to do, all right? So, okay. to start with, have a look at this. Oh. Absolutely horrific. Oh my God, it makes me so mad. Also, you can see his toenails are very long. Very sad to know that he's got ingrown <gasps> ones as well. And then last but not least is <gasps> this is the piece that I'm most concerned about. about. Very vascular, very large, very nodular. All things which could suggest that it's something not very nice. And right. if it is nasty, is it likely to be elsewhere? It could well be. Yeah. 
I volunteer with dog charities and it never stops making me sad how people can just abandon a dog. It's a, just a catalogue of neglect to me that people haven't taken their role as a dog owner and dog carer and, you know, dog mum seriously. All right, but let's sort this immediate issue out. I mean, look at that. It's gone right, right around. back into the pad. That must be agony. Yeah. It just shows how amazing dogs are, that he is in constant discomfort and yet can still find love in his heart for us, for even us. though humans even though we have... do that to him. Exactly. God, they're so they're big tough, and thick. They? Yeah, classic bull terrier nails. Okay. There you go, mate. That's what healthy, normal-looking nails looks like. Much better. No more digging in. So already we've made his life better. Absolutely. The nail clipping was straightforward. But now it's time for the far more complicated removal of the nasty lump on Arnie's bottom. The lump under his tail probably worries me the most because in older dogs, there are some fairly nasty types of cancer that can develop around the anus. Some of them, like carcinomas, for example, are incredibly malignant and if present, will be fatal very quickly. If you can pull his legs a little bit further back, I really wanna see that sort of come right up to me. That's it, great. Arnie's surgery is about to begin, and already Scott is worried about the elderly dog. He is breathing a little bit roughly, so we are concerned about the anaesthetic, and we need to just make sure we keep a very close eye on him. All right, I'm cutting now. Are you ready to go? So what I'm gonna have to do is cut through the skin. Once I start cutting into it, I can see it is just bleeding everywhere. But thankfully for Ali, she was tough enough and she didn't faint. Dog okay now? Yeah, it's fine. Here we go. This is gonna come off now, likely. All right. There we go. There we have it. Nasty looking thing. And unfortunately, it's so big and so thickened that I wouldn't be able to say that we've got good margins so that we have 100% cure. But we need to send this up to the lab and the pathologist will tell us what kind of cells make this up and are they bad ones or is it just an abnormal growth of an, an old boy? Let's hope and it's the latter. And if it's a bad one, what you're saying is you might not have got it all. That's right, and I can't take any more away because I'll then affect the ability for his bum to work He'll be incontinent, which is yet another reason why he won't get a home, so. I meet lots of rescue dogs. I've met rescue bull terriers, not many, but I haven't been involved in surgery. And, and he's so neglected, he's such a mess. Who's gonna take him? Come on. He's been a right soldier, hasn't he? Yes, love him. The next few days here at the practice is gonna be an agonizing wait because we need to wait for the pathologist's report on Arnie's lump. There you go. Hopefully, if that comes back okay and it's not a nasty type of cancer, then we still have to put the poor old boy through yet another anaesthetic to sort out his horrendous teeth. And then we've got to find him a new home. So there's lots of question marks still to come in Arnie's future. No, no, it's just me. It's just me. I know. I'd like to think that Ali's thinking about taking Arnie. Darling, I know. He is definitely twanging her heartstrings, and I think that he will be a very lucky boy if he gets to go home with Ali. It's okay. I think this is like his favorite thing, isn't it? I know, just, just get paddles. paddles. A day after surgery to remove a massive lump from his bottom, elderly rescue dog Arnie is recovering well. It's a hard life, isn't it? <laughs> and nurse Reagan and receptionist Kirsty are making sure he's getting lots of love. Having Arnie here has been amazing. We've all fallen in love with him. Any kind of bull breed, I absolutely love them. And he's, um, yeah, he's just been quite a good addition to the practice. The old dog's next round of surgery on his badly neglected teeth will be in a few days. Scott and his team are hopeful he will then be well enough to go to a new home. <laughs> oh, good boy. <laughs> Phoebe should be getting here pretty soon. Yeah, how exciting for yeah. her. Cool. A new vet really is arriving at the practice today, and Scott and nurse Reagan are waiting really to welcome to her. her. What's she like? She's very nice. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. very wide-eyed, very keen. Cool. Um, and sure to be very, very nervous. 
This is the first time I've ever employed a newly qualified vet. It's quite a big undertaking because they do need quite a lot of support. But at the same time, I met Phoebe last year. She came and saw practice here and we really liked it. She got on well with my team and that's really important to me. So I thought I'd give her a go. Ah, and here she is. Hi. Hey. I'm Phoebe. I'm Regan. Nice to meet you. Nice How are you to doing? Meet you. Welcome. Hello again. How are you feeling? <laughs> Nervous. Yeah. But excited. Good. Yeah. It's nice to have Scott as a friendly face on your first day. I'm really glad that I did placements here, so at least I vaguely know my way around most of the staff and the buildings. Well, we've got lots of exciting things lined up for you today. But you're going to start me off easy, right? Vaccines, health checks. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. You've done lots of learning. Now yeah. I think you need to get your hands dirty. OK. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Should we go walkies? Come on. Good girl. Where are we going? And it's not long <gasps> before Phoebe's here? first patient arrives for her appointment. Hi, Kirsty. Hi, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, good. You have Coco. I've got Coco. Oh, yeah. Phoebe might have been hoping for light duties first off, but she'll be starting with a surgery. My pug Coco is being spayed. I know it's kind of a normal operation, but it's a bit stressful because it's my baby. Yay. Yay. Oh, yes. Hi, Anna. I'm Phoebe. Hi, Phoebe. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And this is Coco. Yes, this is Coco. Hello. Right, let's come <laughs> through. It might be only her first day on the job, yes. but graduate vet Phoebe is quick to recognise canine blue blood. Oh, she really is a little princess, isn't she? Yes, you are. Well, <laughs> apparently, in, um, in China, they were only owned by the, the Chinese aristocracy and kings and queens, and they actually had their own servants. So does Coco have servants? I'm an unofficial servant. <laughs> I do everything for you, don't I? <laughs> totally in your power, young lady. Yes, I am. So what's Coco in for today? Her spaying. Her spaying? Her spaying. Are you nervous? A bit, yeah. Just because it's an operation. Mm. You have no problems with her health-wise? No, she's fine. She's really healthy, loves walking, eats well. Actually, she did have a hernia. A hernia? She's little, quite a big one. OK. We were told to monitor it and it's kind of now disappeared. But I know that if you find it, mm. you might be able to take it out. Yeah. In spay. Yeah, it's not there at the moment. No, it's sort of um, just completely disappeared. But that is the thing with hernias is that they can pop in and out. So yeah. definitely we can look at it while she's under and if there is a hole then we can close that up. Okay. She's going to be absolutely fine. You'll be fine, young lady, won't you? Yeah? Good girl. Anecdotes on Coco. Um, she was very worried about the surgery. So I hope we set some of her fears at rest. Right, I'm going to leave you now, Coco. We'll take good care of her. Bye. Good girl. Go on. You'll be back with your servant soon. Yes. Your servant and your mother and everything. Bye, lovely. Bye. It's going to be a stressful day. Until I get the call that she's OK, I'm going to be a bit on tenterhooks, I think. Are they talking to each other? Yeah. They do talk to each other, don't they? Scott's next two patients are in Hampton Hill. They're a pair of elderly tortoises that recently came to live with Simone and her young family. They seem very hungry today, don't they? A friend posted on Facebook that his parents were retired and that they were looking to rehome their tortoises and would any be in, anybody be interested in having them? Uh, and I jumped at it. Yes, yes, please, please. We have a boy and a girl, Molly and Atwin. We haven't had them that long and I absolutely adore them. And they've become a very, very big part of our life, like all of our lives, the kids as well. Is he gonna like Apple? The pair will be Scott's oldest ever patients. They're estimated to be over 100 years old. We assume that they would have been brought over from Africa in between the world wars, the two world, the, the first world war and the second world war, and they would have survived the second world war in England somewhere, um, which is incredible. I was so excited to get them, and then suddenly was all scared about, oh, but I have to look after them really carefully. People before me looked after them so well, then to brought them to this stage, I feel I can't sort of drop the baton now. 
But recently, Simone has noticed male tortoise Atawin has a problem. So she's called Scott to check him out. Hi, Simone. How Hi, are you? Scott. I can't wait to see my reptile patients. Yeah, come in and meet them. There, there. Oh, there's there one of the is. patients. There he is. He's walking quite quickly for an old timer. They move quicker than you would expect. So, Hello. So this is Aswin. So this is Atwin. the boy. It's absolutely incredible, isn't it, to think that you're holding a hundred-year-old animal. I know. It's quite a responsibility. Isn't it? It's great being a vet when you can go out and about and meet other animals, but particularly ones so old, a full hundred years, it does make them incredibly precious creatures. So I can see that discharge. How long has that been there for? <sighs> Probably about two or three weeks. OK. And do you think it's affecting him at all? I mean, is he coughing no. or sneezing or...? Not that I've noticed. No. And he's eating lots. And eating as you've well. seen, he's active. Yeah. Um, OK. Having a general look at Atwin, he seems like a very healthy tortoise. But runny nose in a tortoise, generally it's not just a simple cold like in people. In a tortoise, if left alone, it can become something more complicated, something like pneumonia. I think what's happened in this case, he's a new animal to you. Yeah. And I think during the process of movement from yeah. the old to the new, yeah. he's an old boy and they don't cope with change very well. Yeah. So I think he's probably got a little bit stressed and as a result has okay. developed this condition. Yeah. Oh, good boy. There you go. After putting a couple of antibiotic drops into Adwin's nostrils, he looks wholeheartedly unimpressed, but as a hundred year old, he's allowed to be a bit grumpy, but he seems very happy and I'm sure he's going to make a full recovery. Boy. Give him a rest. Yeah. All right, then. Give Jump him a buddy. Let me take you to bed. I'm very relieved that we got Scott around. Part of me initially was, oh, it's just a bit of a runny nose. I don't want to waste his time. But um, I'm very glad that we did We did call him in. So you've got another tortoise somewhere around here, haven't you? She's just over there in the corner. Yeah. Should I go and get her for you? Yeah. Atwin's partner is a female right. called wow. Molly. So she's a lot heavier. And is she equal in age as well? Yeah. They've been together for about... 80 years that we know of. And do the old couple get on very well? Yes, he, he, he can bother her at times. And, um, bother? What do you mean? Um, how do I put it tactfully? <laughs> I don't know. What are you going to say? <laughs> so, Atwin does harass Molly quite a lot, and their mating ritual is essentially to headbutt and bite. Occasionally, if he is being a bit rambunctious, I will bring him in the house or put him in the pen or just take him to the other side of the garden. But she doesn't actually seem that bothered. I've gone for flowers before, but maybe I'll try headbutting. <laughs> headbutting. Yeah. I've caught him on top of her a couple of times at the, when we first had them, and then she laid some eggs. Wow. Wow, so you've got tortoise eggs. We have tortoise eggs. Oh my goodness. You can't help but be really impressed that two old timers are <laughs> busily getting at it in Simone's garden. So whatever she's got growing here, it obviously works very well in that department. So they're in here. We have two trays. That one has three in it. Wow, that's amazing. Look at that. You can actually see that there is some density in there. So it could be a yolk. Okay. And a white, just like a normal chicken egg. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's naturally fertilized. But we know that yeah. these guys have been uh, busy getting on the good foot and doing the bad thing. Yeah. And as a result, there could be some tortoise babies in there. You never know. Well, they're doing well in the incubator. They're nice and warm. Yeah. So let's get them back in there. Lovely. Good luck, little ones. All fingers crossed. Um, hope that we possibly get some baby tortoises out of it. You've totally got to invite me back when you get the pitter patter of tiny little tortoise definitely. feet. Definitely, I'll definitely. Slightly panic call, no doubt. Yeah. Oh, what do I do now? And I'll check on that to snotty nose at the yes. same time. Yes, no, that'd be lovely. Thank yeah. you. Well, no thank problem. you for coming out. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. It's obvious to see that Simone is really dedicated to these tortoises already. She has real love for them. I think she has real respect for them and she wants to do the best by them. So she's the perfect new owner for them and hopefully they'll live a further long and happy life with her. Hi Jess. Hi Phoebe. This is Coco. Coco, are you all right? What's Coco, Coco here for? Coco's in for her spay today. Oh, you're so cute. You're so tiny. At the Richmond practice, Coco the pug is about to be spayed by graduate vet Phoebe, assisted by Nurse Jess. 
Yeah. I'm a bit nervous because I haven't done that many spays. I did a few as a student, but since graduating, I've only assisted on one, and this will be the first one being the main vet making all the decisions. Look at that. Well done, puppy. Well done. Coco also has a small hernia which Phoebe will be repairing. Hello, ladies. Hello. And Scott has returned to the clinic right, to supervise both procedures. Today I'm here just to lend a hand, to be a shoulder really for Phoebe as she embarks on this big journey of doing her first spay. It can be incredibly nerve wracking, so I want to try and support her to look after her and make sure she gets safely through this procedure and so does Coco. How was Anna this morning? Was she fretting? I told her she didn't need to be worried and that we take good care of her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you tell her how many spays you performed before you said that? Um, no, I, uh, I kept that fact to myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. I've done quite a few, so don't you worry. I know the theory of it and I've learned it a thousand times, but it's just those tiny little things in practice that are just a bit different, like a bit extra fat obscuring the uterus, a bleeder where I wasn't expecting one, that means you need to be able to react quickly. And that's what I need to hone down my skills. Go for it. Jess, are you happy? I'm happy, yeah. Okay. Every single vet coming out of vet school is incredibly nervous when it comes to their first spay. It makes your heart go. It really does give you palpitations. It's a very nerve wracking experience, but it's a real rite of passage as far as being a new graduate vet. Okay, so you've got your ovary at the end. That's my ovary. Okay. Now, the hardest bit for a new vet is to get used to how much tension you have to apply to break the ovarian break ligament. ligament. Mm. And it's just about trying to feel confident with how much tension to apply to actually snap it. Mm. And it's always going to feel like more than you should. Can you feel the tension running up? Yep, I can feel Snapping. it stretching now. Yep. And then you've got to just push down, snap. Is she OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the most painful part of the procedure, yeah. isn't it? For you She's or for the dog? <laughs> Both of us. <laughs> It's stretching, it hasn't broken yet. If you grab it, slightly twist your hand to the side, and then you can snap that way. Put the pressure downward, really go for it. Breaking? Yeah, broken. That's great, good job. Okay. I've seen vets struggle with that for years. So <laughs> that's really good. It's a bit nerve-wracking, but Scott was able to give me loads of helpful tips in spaying, and all of those are hopefully going to help me do my next spay quicker and easier. So if you just start your second incision by just attaching it, mm -hmm. yeah. Just going over the hernia, lovely. Not only is Coco in for her spay today, but also she has an umbilical hernia basically what we see in humans as an outie belly button. And that's just where the umbilical cord has detached from mum and the placenta. The abdominal wall hasn't closed properly. It leaves a hole and then a little bit of fat and sometimes intestines can pop out. Phoebe's able to close up the skin really well, so no more hole and no more outie belly button. Done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Very Start good. to finish. Very good. Although I was very grateful for your assistance, Scott. You're very <laughs> welcome. All right, now let's wake this princess up, shall we? Have we got a throne ready? <laughs> Phoebe's done very well. I mean, this is a very nerve wracking procedure for any new vet to do. She's jumped the hurdle and she's on her way. Well done. Oh, big stretch. Mm. There we go. The surgery went really well. Coco's recovering. She doesn't have a hernia anymore. She doesn't have ovaries. I think we've done well. Okay. You call your mummy. Oh, boy. In Richmond, it's time for Arnie's second surgery. This time to fix his badly neglected teeth. Oh, look, he's there. Hello. Hey, who's who's it? It? Who's hey, it? Hi again. Careful. Scott's oh, invited Ali back to assist with today's Hello. surgery. He's definitely happier. The wound at the back of his tail here, uh, where we've removed the lump, um, is healing very nicely oh. indeed. So nice assisting the other day. And even better news is the results have come back. And although it looked like an incredibly nasty tumour, it had 
the suggestion that it was going to become something nasty, but actually it's benign. So. No way. Yes. Oh me! Just a nasty, horrible lump. Yeah. Oh. More unsightly than. Yeah. Dreadful. Yeah. That's the best news. Yeah. A little bit of sunshine in our boy's life. But Arnie's good news is tinged with sadness. You'll After be Scott found out also, the poor old dog is death. death. Stone death. Stone death. Yeah, he can't hear a <laughs> <Yes>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Hey. Scott and his team are now so more he's, determined he's so than well. ever to give in. the brave bull terrier a better life. Yeah, relaxed. So now it's I mean, time to start his much-needed dental Wait, surgery. So just... Let's get you downstairs, my boy. And let's sort those teeth out. Although I'd love to give Arnie a Hollywood smile, this isn't a choice. I have to do this dental. His teeth are horrendous. There's a huge amount of bacteria and infection built up along his gum line, which will be having a major effect on not only his quality of life, but also the health of his liver and his kidneys. Hold your dental chart there, please, Do nurse. I not need any gloves? Uh, well, we might get you pop on some gloves in a second. Okay. Should I fill his name in? Yes, go for it. As Ali's here and she's a hard worker, I'm going to put her to work. So not only will she be my dental nurse for the day and help me to understand which teeth are going to stay and which teeth are going to go, but also she'll do a little spot of scaling and polishing. This is years worth of tartar that we're going to get rid of in an afternoon, which is, it is quite satisfying, yeah. Oh, she could be quite rough. Yep. Doing a dental on a dog like Arnie is pretty dirty business. It's very grubby, it's quite bloody, and at times it's really quite rough as well. We have to put quite a bit of force in to remove some of the teeth that are loose and then scale all the nasty tartar that's been building up over a number of years. So 401 is loose, so that's going to come away. Eight of Arnie's teeth are badly infected and will have to be removed. So when they come out that easily, they're meant to come out. His gums are also in shocking condition. Do you want the goggles? And a thorough clean is needed to remove years of built-up tartar and plaque that's contributing to his gum disease. It really must have been such a painful time. Every time he opened his mouth to chew, it must have been an exercise in discomfort. But now all that tartar's removed, just like when you go to a dental hygienist yourself, your teeth feel shiny and fresh. And that's exactly how hopefully Arnie will be feeling. Oh boy. Well, that's the last thing you need to do. Hopefully you can have a lovely retirement now. Ready for a loving home. Mm -hmm. Do you know anyone? I'm trying to be very subtle when it comes to Ali and maybe considering that she should take Arnie home with her. Uh, I'm not normally classed as subtle. My wife would say I'm like a brick through a window. <laughs> but Scott's not so gentle persuasion seems to be working. He's a lovely boy. He is, and when he's up, he's such a joy. Mm. Tail going. It's a classic love sponge. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. We could share him. Maybe we dog share. Yeah. Oh, you have to sell Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Hello, Coco. Time to go and see Mummy. Here we go. Should we go see Mummy? In Richmond, Anna and her three boys are anxious to see how their precious pug Coco has fared after her operation. Here she is. Hello, darling. <laughs> oh, oh, Coco. Baby. She's been really, really good. Okay. <laughs> the surgery went really well. We managed to spay her and repair the hernia. She's recovered well and she's had some food. Coco, you're such a brave girl. Anna's definitely delighted to have her little girl back in her arms. I think with all the crazy boys around, she needs a bit of sanity and a bit of girl power. Yeah. She's going to need some big brotherly love. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, oh, thank you very much. That's Ruby. okay, boys. I'm just glad she's all right. Yeah. No, honestly, thank you so much. No problem. The princess is home, and she's going to be treated like a princess for the next few days for sure. So, yeah, that'll be easy for me to do. Movies, cuddles on the sofa, just chilling out with Coco and the boys, and she is going to be in charge. Girl. 
Good boy. That's it. What a good old gent. Okay, now remember, best behaviour, hey? Mind your P's and Q's. Today, Scott has brought rescue dog Arnie to a local park. Walking down the hill with Arnie, immediately I get a little bit nervous. There's real trepidation because this is a make or break moment. Arnie has the chance of a new life with someone absolutely amazing. So I just hope this works, but I am very, very nervous. Uncle Scott's on his way with a surprise. Scott is hoping his good friend Ali will give Arnie a new home. But it all hinges on how well Ali's dog Mabel gets on with the old Bull Terrier. I can see your potential new family over here. Come on. My biggest priority is Mabel. I hope the meet and greet goes really well, but I need to be sure that I'm doing the right thing for her before I can do the right thing for him. Hey, Al. Hey there. <gasps> Who's, that? Who's this handsome guy? Look at him. Who's this handsome guy? Jenny. Say hi. Oh, look at him. There you go. Aww. Oh, <laughs> they're going to do a dance. They're going to do the lead dance. Arnie and Mabel lock eyes and love at first sight. Oh, look. I think <laughs> that's the first time I've seen him do that. Oh, yeah. are you kidding? No. Oh, look. Mabel and Arnie seem to get along brilliantly. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. oh. Immediately, Arnie starts to play bow, which is a exhibition of happiness where they want to engage another dog in play behaviour. That's so, so positive. They start walking around and smelling each other, which is very normal for dogs. And then they get to a point where they're so comfortable in each other's company that they pretty much ignore each other. That is an ideal result. That's brilliant, isn't it? Very calm, very relaxed. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Very happy, waggy tails. Look. We really couldn't ask for anything better. No. The look in Ali's face shows how calm and how happy she is about the situation. Looking good. He needs a good home. He hasn't had one, has he? And I think I can give him a pretty good home. Yeah. It feels yeah. kind of right. So happy. So happy. <laughs> so nice. It might not be for a long time, but it'll be for a good time. You'll be fed well and loved, sweets. Yeah. You'll be there, and you've got a personal physician. That's it. <laughs> The meet and greet went brilliantly. So, yeah, I'm really, really happy. I think he's found a home with me. You're right there, Mabel. Hey? Yeah. You're right there. <laughs> hey? You're missing out, darling. Did you just You're right. <laughs> You're right there. As Arnie's an old boy, he still needs a little bit more treatment before he's fully ready to go to his new forever home. So he's going to come back to the practice with me, but very soon I get to help this boy as he ventures forth into this wonderful retirement. Happy families. I hope so. Right, let's come and find Atawan. Yes, yeah, the obligatory search for the tortoise. Scott's back at oh, Simone's house to check up on one of his How oldest patients, a 100-year-old tortoise with a runny nose. Hello, He's buddy. doing a lot, lot better. Good. Well, his nostrils look nice and clear, don't they, champ? And no discharge, which is brilliant. Good stuff, my boy, hey? Or sir, as I should say, considering how old you are. I'm really glad to see that Adwin is back to full health and looking great. But I'm very curious about the fact that this old boy managed to procreate with his girlfriend and produce eggs. So what happened to them? I'm really interested to know. Right, come through and um, I'd like you to meet Maisie and Daisy. Wow. These are our little tortoise babies. Can I pick one of them up? Yeah, feel free. Hello. Hello, cutie. So which one's this one? So that one is Maisie, and this is Daisy. Mm. They're a week old today. Yeah. And um, we had the pleasure of watching them hatch out. Which wow, was really? Amazing. When they were hatching, first of all, it was just a tiny little nose and a little face poking out. Slowly, one came out on its side, but the other one properly came out like a little dinosaur with its front paws first. And it was incredibly cute to watch. You can do this, little fella. I mean, they're absolutely fantastic. And to think that they've come from 100-year-old parents. I know. It's incredible. I really it? didn't think the eggs would hatch. I thought that was a real long shot. These little creatures are so amazing and extraordinary and I feel very honoured that I've been allowed to examine them for the very first time. But at some point in their life, they'll be examined by a vet that isn't even born yet, which is a bit frightening, but super cool at the same time. 
And if we do everything right, there's no reason why my grandkids or even my great grandkids might not be looking after these guys. You guys have got a lovely future ahead. We absolutely adore Maisie and Daisy. They've really become part of our family. A lot of friends have said, oh, are you going to rehome them and can we have one? It's like, no, they're ours to keep. <laughs> Graduate vet Phoebe is in Chiswick to check up on very special patient Coco and her doting owner, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi, Phoebe. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. This young lady's very well as well. Hello, Coco. You? I'm really excited to see Coco today. It's been a couple of weeks since she came in for her spay and her hernia repair. It was one of the first procedures I did since qualifying, so um, I'll be interested to see how the spay wound is healing. Right, should we have a little look at that scar then? Oh wow, look at that! That looks really, really good. It's got no recurrence of that hernia. It's nice and flat with the skin. Yeah. Yeah, there's no pain, swelling, good. discharge. Oh. No, that's really good. It's completely healed. Amazing. Well done, Coco. Oh. Having Phoebe come to see us is really important, obviously, because Coco is our fourth child, basically, our only daughter, even though she's canine. And it's just really important to know that she's OK and that nothing's wrong and that she's recovered. You're all done. You can be signed off now. Good. Go back to playing how you want to. Yes. <laughs> it was really great to see Anna again and see Coco. I'm really, really happy with her wound. It's all healed really nicely. Go! Now go back to normal exercise, playing with her brothers and being full-time princess. Go, go, go! Come on! Good girl! Phoebe made me feel, you know, really happy about Coco's recovery. And I now know that I can take Coco out for a walk and, you know, that she's happy and well. It means a lot to us. Coco! Go, 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 go! Go on! Come on! Good girl. Oh, it's so lovely. It's a milestone day for elderly dog Arnie. The 14-year-old rescue dog has undergone weeks of surgeries, medication and TLC. And today he's finally well enough to head off to his new home. Hey guys, I was wondering where he was. We just kidnapped him. Scott. He's enjoying his favourite pastime of being adored. Yeah, okay. just making the most of it. It's last few minutes here. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it's very sad for us to say goodbye to Arnie because we've all absolutely fallen in love with him, particularly some of the support staff, Kirsty and Reagan. They adore him. They've actually taken him on weekends to their own homes and given him all the love and the care and attention that we all pride ourselves on. So it is very sad that they have to say goodbye to him, but for Arnie, it's a great day because he gets to go to a loving new home. <laughs> Come on. Come on, mate. Let's go to your new home. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. Come on. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. Sad. I'm going to do now. I know. <laughs> Come on then. Hey, chauffeur driven to your new home. Come on. Arnie's been with us for a long time now. For him to go to his new home obviously is a really important step in his future. But for us, we're left with a big hole. He has been such a wonderful personality to have in the building, and we're going to miss him very much. Back, mate, let's go. Boys on tour. Yeah? Big brother's coming today. Yes, he is. At Arnie's <laughs> new home in Surrey, an excited Ali is waiting with her other rescue dog, Mabel. Mabel doesn't have a clue what's coming. But I think when he arrives, she'll think he's going to stay for a bit and then leave. It's just the bond between the two dogs. You're never really sure until, you know, you're in the home environment. There's a tiny little bit of anxiety there. The rest of it is just excitement. OK. Come on then, handsome. We're here. There we go. Good boy. Come on then. Come on then. Come on, this is your new home. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Hello, look. Hello, your new fella. new friend. Look. I know you can't hear me, but hello, fella. Hello, hello. 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 Here's your new boy. Hello, fella. God, Scott, he's looking so well. I know. You've put on a few, well, I don't know how many kilos. He's put on four kilograms. Four. He's put on a kilogram a week. 
So he's just doing so well. And now, you get Cheers. to enjoy the high life with Ellie. Welcome home, treasure. Hey. It's incredible full journey that we've had with Arnie. He's gone from rescue, we've rehabilitated him, had two major operations, and now he's going to be released back into the wilds of beautiful Surrey with Ali. He's going to have such a wonderful twilight of his life, and the fact that I've been able to play a part in that is really special for me. Go on, old man. Come on, you can do it. So he's home. He's home here with us, with Mabel. He seems pretty relaxed. Mabel seems pretty relaxed. That's it. What a perfect day one. So nice to see him in a garden, Ellie. Oh, love him. I know. He's so lovable. He's so lovable. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.